So guys what if broken Naruto x Sona C3 in DXD movie? Naruto Jaegerjakes was a rather laid-back 16-year-old young man standing at 510 with lightly tanned skin. Deep purple eyes with green lines under them, shoulder-length spiky red hair with light blue tips, and a lean but muscular build, for clothes he is currently wearing the Kuo Academy boys uniform with the exception that instead of the blazer he wore a jagged, short, white jacket with an upturned collar that was open and had the sleeves rolled up, while walking across campus Naruto thought about his life so far. His father Grimjao Jaegerjakes was a powerful panther yukai that lived up to his title as the Panther King. Naruto remembered that from the moment he could walk his father started training him to fight, and he loved every second of it. His father never held anything back during training which Naruto appreciated as just like his father he loved to fight. Grimjao wasn't the lovey deve always saying I love you type of father. He was the type of father that let his actions speak for him rather than use words. Naruto knew that the fact his father trained him at all meant that his father thought it was worth his time to do so. He never really used Naruto's name, mostly referring to Naruto as son or my boy. This told Naruto that Grimjao was proud enough of him to acknowledge that they were father and son. And though it was rare Grimjao did show physical signs of affection to Naruto by petting him on the head or by letting Naruto ride on his shoulders while they walked through town, at the age of seven Naruto lost his father to some devils that wanted to force him into their peerage, while he lost his father Naruto took comfort in the fact that it took ten high-class devils to kill his father and he had taken every devil down with him. Naruto's mother was Kashina Jaegerjakes, a rather powerful human that could actually put up with Grimjao's rough and tough attitude. She had also helped in Naruto's training and just like his father she didn't hold back on him. Unlike his father Kashina had no problem showering him with affection. Always kissing him, hugging him, telling him she loved him. And calling him her little panther prince, Kashina showed the same affection to Grimjao and while both father and son made it seem like it annoyed them that she did that. Neither of them really minded the affection they received from the woman they loved more than anything. At the age of 12 Naruto lost his mom to fallen angels, he had tried to save her and had even managed to kill three of the twelve fallen angels but in the end he was incapacitated and forced to watch as they decapitated his mother in front of him, her last words to him being Naruto-kun, I love you, the bastard that caused this, Kokabiel, had decided to let him live saying that he would hunt Naruto down later as if it was a game. Most people would have broken after that but Naruto wasn't most people. Instead of breaking down and crying he became enraged and vowed to kill Kokabiel with his bare hands. The potency of his rage had caused two things to happen. First he awakened his sacred gear which took the form of a sword named Destruction Pantera. And the second thing was that he had started to unconsciously use Senjutsu, he had felt the malice of the world trying to corrupt him and turn him into a monster, trying to feed his rage until he lost control and lashed out at anything in sight, it didn't work as his will to stay in control was too strong. Plus before his father died he had Naruto start learning to use Senjutsu since he believed that it was a powerful tool for any yukai. From then on Naruto lived on his own doing odd jobs in order to get by and training himself when he had the time. During his training Naruto had managed to suppress his chakra to the point that even skilled sensors wouldn't be able to tell it was there, this was great for Naruto because when he first came to Kuo Academy after it became co-ed he immediately sensed devils. Despite what happened to his father Naruto didn't have hate for all devils but he was cautious of them so he was glad they had never noticed he was different from any other human. At first Naruto had trouble making friends since almost everyone just considered him a delinquent thanks to his hair. His attitude, and the markings under his eyes, that changed though when he started beating the crap out of the perverted trio for peeping on the girls kendo club. Naruto hated perverts with a passion, he became the handsome bad boy to most of the girls and most hated guy on campus to the guys. Not that he cared what the guys thought of him, through him constantly having to beat the shit out of those three too very important this happened. First he started dating one of the girls from the kendo club named Kates. though after two months of dating she brought up that her best friend Murayama liked him too and she wanted him to date the both of them. Naruto agreed and started to date Murayama as well though he was surprised when they didn't care if the whole school found out, the information that Naruto was dating two girls at once, and the girls were okay with it caused the boys to hate Naruto even more while the girls didn't seem to care, apparently they knew that Kates and Murayama were best friends that shared everything so they expected the girls to share a boy as well. The second thing was that since he was beating up students he met the student council president Suna Shitori. One of the devils that occupied the school, while a bit strict for his liking Naruto found that he liked Suna and the rest of the student council which he guessed were her peerage. He was cautious of them at first but over time they became his friends. 
Shor Suna still had to punish him for beating up other students but she made it known to him that she approved of his treatment of the perverted trio. Due to being able to become friends with Suna and her peerage he thought that had tried making friends with the other devils on campus, he only succeeded in making friends with the school mascot Kaneko Tiju, he could feel the chakra inside Kaneko so he guessed she was a yukai before becoming a devil, that was probably why she warmed up to him so fast, she could feel on a subconscious level that they were the same. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts when he heard Issei bragging about having date later on tonight, who in the hell in their right mind would go out with that perverted idiot? Naruto asked himself in thought, he decided not to think about it too much as school was almost over for the day and he had training to do later. Student Council Office Suna Shitori or her real name Sona Sitri, was a beautiful young woman standing at 55 with smooth fair skin, violet eyes, black hair done in a short bob cut, a slim figure, long legs, wide hips, and CC cup breasts, for clothes she wore the Kuo Academy girls uniform along with glasses, currently she is playing chess against her childhood friend and rival Rias Gremory. Rias was another beautiful young woman standing at 58 with smooth fair skin, blue-green eyes, long crimson red hair that went down to her ass, a buxom figure, wide hips, thick thighs, long legs, a large ass, and D-cup breasts, for clothes she wore the Kuo Academy girls uniform, I believe this game is mine Sona, said Rias as she moved a piece. Don't be so sure about that Rias, checkmate, said Sona as she knocked over Rias King. Hum. I could have sworn I had you this time, said Rias. Yes, and I used your overconfidence to my advantage, said Sona. I see that now, but I have to say Sona I am a little disappointed that you went back on our agreement, said Rias. What do you mean? Asked Sona, we agreed that you would allow me to deal with the fallen angels that have shown up in the city, but it seems that a lot of them were dealt with before any of my peerage could get there, said Rias. I assure you Rias that my peerage has nothing to do with this, I ordered them to stay out of the situation as you would be handling it, said Sona though she was a bit offended that Rias thought she would do such a thing. If it's not you then we have someone unaffiliated with either of us operating in our territory and we need to find out who, said Rias. Indeed, but on to another topic, how are you coming with your potential new piece? asked Sona. I believe it is going well, I also believe that the fallen angels will make their move on him tonight, said Rias. Rias you do know that Issei Hyodo would accept being in your peerage if you just asked him right? asked Sona. Oh I am sure of that, his perverseness would have him accept simply to stare at my breasts all day, but the thing is that the fallen angels have been watching him for a reason and I need to know why, I hate using him as bait but if the fallen angels are up to something sinister then we need to know, said Rias. I see, said Sona, you're not jealous that I called dibs on him first are you? asked Rias with a smirk. Hardly, while I will admit that Hyodo san has potential. I already have my eye on someone else that will be more fitting for my peerage. Said Sona while thinking about Naruto, something just kept telling her that there was something really special about him and he would make a great addition to her peerage. She wasn't usually a person to make decisions based off of feelings but she just couldn't ignore this feeling no matter how hard she tried. It didn't help that over the course of their friendship that she and the rest of the female members of her peerage had grown feelings for him. It wasn't their fault as underneath that laid back and slightly violent attitude was a kind, cunning, funny, and passionate young man that you couldn't help but love, Sona and her peerage understood very well why Kates and Marayama were so happy with him. Oh really? Just who has caught your eye Sona? asked Rias. I think I'll keep that as a surprise for now Rias, said Sona knowing that for some reason only Rias Rook, Kaneko, seemed to like Naruto. Oh fine be that way, anyway I should be going, said Rias as she stood up and left. Later that night Naruto was currently walking home after a long day of training while looking at a flyer Sona gave him before he left school. She told him that it was supposed to give him luck, but he knew that this was one of those summoning flyers that devils gave out, if Sona was planning on having him join her peerage he actually didn't mind as long as she didn't try to make a slave out of him, Naruto was brought out of his thoughts when he sensed a fallen angel nearby, another one, how many of them do I have to kill before they get the message? Naruto asked himself in thought. Yeah it had been Naruto killing the fallen angels in the city, it wasn't like he was simply hunting fallen angels but every time he felt their power and went to check out the area he always found a fallen either trying to kill a human or rape them, so he had to kill the fallen. Running over to the area where he sensed the power Naruto found Issei with his date, apparently named Yuma, Naruto could feel that Yuma was the fallen angel he sensed and now it made sense on how Issei got a date at all, but now he was wondering what a fallen angel would want with Issei of all people. Deciding to stay and see what would happen Naruto stayed hidden and used his enhanced hearing to listen in, everything seemed fine at first until Naruto heard Yuma ask would you die for me? 
and saw that Issei wasn't even moving but questioning her on what she said. What kind of idiot doesn't get suspicious when someone asks them to die? Naruto asked himself in thought. Yuma then went through a transformation that caused her to grow slightly taller, her eyes became a darker purple, her body became more mature with her breasts going from C cup to D cup, and finally her clothes were destroyed and replaced with what looked like a S&M outfit and had two black feathered wings coming out her back, Naruto had to say the transformation was hot and the outfit looked great on her. Sorry Issei, while you seem like a nice boy and I don't really want to do this, but I have orders to kill you, I hope you don't blame me, but God for putting that sacred gear in you, and by the way my name is Rainer, said the now correctly named Rainer as she formed a red light spear in her hand. Okay she clearly said she had to kill him so he should be running by now, thought Naruto. Boobies, I saw real naked boobies, cheered Issei completely ignoring the situation. That fucking moron. Naruto yelled in thought while Rainer just sweat dropped before throwing her spear at him, Naruto acted quickly and rushed over just in time to tackle Issei out of the way, when they stood up Naruto slapped Issei in the face. Ow. What was that for you bastard? said Issei while rubbing his red cheek. Shut up you fucking moron, who the hell cheers about breasts when they are about be killed. Now get out of here before I rip off your fucking dick and shove it up your nose. Yelled Naruto, Issei paled at this took off running but he stopped in order to stare at Rainer's breasts a bit longer, this was incredibly stupid because as soon as he stopped a blue light spear hit him in the back and came out of his stomach. What's taking so long Rainer? Asked a man coming out from behind a tree. The man looked to be middle-aged with fair skin dark hair, and blue eyes, he wore black shoes, black pants, a white dress shirt, a grey trench coat, and a grey fedora. Sorry Donisik, but this human got in the way, said Rainer. Just then two more fallen angels showed with one being about as tall as Kaneko with blonde hair and blue eyes while being dressed like a maid, the second one was rather tall with long dark blue hair, dark blue eyes, and DD cup breasts while being dressed like a sexy secretary, Middlet, Calawarner. Did you guys follow me too? asked Rainer. No, we follow Donisik, said Middlet. Okay, it's official. All female fallen angels are hot, Naruto thought to himself while keeping his guard up. Anyway, let's just kill this little bug and get out of here, said Donisik. Wait, there's no reason to kill him, we can just erase his memory of us in this night, said Middlet. He's also really handsome, so we could have a little fun with him, said Calawarner. Three hot girls and two guys sounds wrong. Get rid of that guy and you've got a deal, said Naruto, he was exhausted from training so he was hoping to get out of this without fighting, he actually didn't like this line of thinking as he knew his father would have fought anyway but his mother taught him think things through rather than just try and smash through everything. Well he is cute so I don't see why not, said Rainer, what they didn't know was that Issei was still alive and was right now hating Naruto even more for being offered a chance to have sex with three smoking hot girls. Naruto was about to sigh in relief before he had to quickly dodge a blue light spear, what the hell, said Naruto. We're not making deals with human trash now shut up and die, said Donisik while creating another light spear and charging at Naruto. Naruto kept dodging all of the swipes coming at him while he was trying to come up with a plan, he was low on chakra so any of his techniques were out of the question and he didn't have the stamina to use his sacred gear's active abilities, damn it hold still, said Donisik as he stabbed at Naruto. Naruto was backed up against a tree and therefore couldn't dodge so instead he caught the spear with his left hand, impossible, no human can hold a light spear, yelled Donisik. I am much sturdier than a simple human, said Naruto as he gave Donisik a strong right hook to the jaw that sent him flying back, Naruto was now breathing heavy with his left hand smoking from holding that spear, he did not have the energy for a real fight right now as the only reason he was able to block that last attack was because of an ability of his sacred gear known as Hiero. Hiero was a passive ability that basically gave Naruto skin as hard as steel. Rainer, Kalawarner, Middlet help me, yelled Donisik while hold his jaw. Why, you're the only one that wants to kill him? asked Rainer. You know we have orders to kill everyone that gets in our way, and you know what happens if we don't follow orders, said Donisik. The girls each grimaced at this before each of them made a light spear with Rainare's being red, Kalawarner's being yellow, and Middlet's being pink. Sorry about this handsome. But you have no idea how bad it would be for us not to follow orders, said Kalawarner. I understand but you better come at me with everything you've got. Said Naruto, all four of the fallen angels charged at him and swung at him. Naruto managed to block and dodge most of their attack and the ones that got through his defense were stopped by his hiero, Naruto was able to throw in a few counter punches and kicks in order to get the girls to back off but he punched Donisik so hard in the face that he broke the fallen angel's nose and launched him into a tree 
while it was a good fight Naruto used up any energy he had left and fell to one knee while breathing heavily. Pant asterisk, pant asterisk, you guys give up, asterisk pant asterisk, yet? Asked Naruto, standing up and shaking legs he was suddenly stabbed in both his sides by Kalawarner and Middle while Rainer stabbed him in the stomach and this time they got through his hiero. Naruto coughed up blood but still had fight in his eyes and somehow managed to kick Middlet and Kalawarner away from him and gave Rainer a palm thrust to the chest that launched her back. This, won't stop, me, said Naruto while somehow still standing, he was then suddenly hit in the middle of his chest with a light spear and was nailed to the tree behind him. Now you stay there and you die, yelled Donaseek while holding his broken nose, come on you three let's get out of here, said Donaseek before he flew off. Once again, we're really sorry about this handsome said Kalawarner before all three of them gave him a kiss on his cheek before flying off. He he he, at least I got to live long enough to watch a bastard like you die, said Issei in a weak voice, this had the effect of pissing Naruto off and since he inherited his father's and mother's temper it was not a good thing to piss him off. Fuck, you Issei, you can die, if you want, but I, refuse, to die, like this, said Naruto with blood dripping from his stab wounds and coming out of his mouth. Whatever you bastard, I just wish I could have died with my face between Ryo's breasts, said Issei, it was then that a bright red glow shone from Issei's pocket and a moment later Ryo's appeared through a magic circle. Your strong desire has called out to me so I am here to grant your wish, oh you're still alive, good that means your will is strong, said Ryo's while looking down at Issei, it was then that she finally noticed Naruto pinned to a tree with four different light spears in him while still being alive, Naruto? You weren't supposed to be here but oh well, said Ryo's. Oh well? Oh well. I am pinned to a fucking tree and all she can fucking say is oh fucking well. Naruto raged in his head. The fact that you're still alive even with four light spears in your body says that you have a strong will too but I have to wonder why. You're an orphan so it's not like you have anyone waiting for you at home. You have very few friends that probably wouldn't notice that you're missing, and those two girls you're toying with would be better off without a delinquent like you, said Rias while looking Naruto directly in the eye. I, refuse, too die, here, said Naruto becoming more and more pissed. You misunderstand Naruto, while your will to live is impressive you will still die here, you're a simple human and you were never meant to survive an attack like this, you might have actually made a good member of my peerage but you're just not worth it, said Rias. You're, underestimating, me, said Naruto while being super pissed now, much like his father Naruto hated it when people would look down on him or underestimate him. No, you're overestimating yourself, now if you excuse me I have important work to do. Said Rias as she turned away from Naruto went back to Issei, Naruto watched as Rias used all eight of her pawns in order to turn Issei into a devil, Naruto only knew a little about the peerage system but he was sure that the more pieces you needed to turn someone the stronger they were, Naruto was also sure that the only reason Issei of all people was worth so much was because of his sacred gear, after Rias finished the process she teleported away with Issei. Fucking, bitch, she better. Hope I, don't get off, this damn, tree. Naruto said to himself while trying to push himself off the tree, it took a few tries but he did manage to get off the tree and fell to his knees, I want, die, here, said Naruto before he heard movement and saw that Rainer, Kalawarner, and Middle were back. What are you three doing here? Asked Naruto. We're here to make sure you live, especially after what that bitch of a devil just said, said Rainer. The three of them then each made their spears disappear but then quickly placed their hands over his wounds, we're not true angels anymore so our healing skills aren't as powerful as they used to be but we can at least keep you alive, said Rainer. We have to get Donazik's spear out, said Kalawarner. Ill pull it out and then you use your other hand to cover the wound, said Rainer, she grabbed the spear with her free hand and then quickly pulled it out with Kalawarner using her other hand to cover the wound. Thank you for this, but if one of you could reach into my pocket I think I have something that can help said Naruto, Middle reached into his pocket and felt around until she felt something and started pulling on it, that is not what I wanted you to find, said Naruto. Sorry couldn't myself, ill try the other pocket. Oh and girls we would have had a really, really good time with him, said Middle before searching his other pocket then pulled out Sona's flyer. Wati you can't summon a devil, I don't know if you know this or not but devils and fallen angels don't get along too well, said Kalawarner. I know but I am sure I can get this one to be cool said Naruto before silently making a wish, the flyer began to glow blue before a blue magic circle appeared and Sona came out of it. Your strong desire has called out to me so what have you done to him? yelled Sona when she finally noticed the state Naruto was in and the fallen angels around him. Worry about that later, help him, said Middlet, 
Sona was a bit suspicious as to why the fallen were being so helpful but decided to think about it later as her friend and crush was hurt. The fallen angels moved away from Naruto when Sona used a spell that caused his body from the neck down to be covered in glowing blue water. Thanks, Suna chan said Naruto. Sona blushed a bit of this but nodded to him anyway before giving a hard look to the fallen angels. And that look means it's time for us to go, but before we do why don't you tell us your name handsome, said Kala Warner. Naruto, Naruto Jaquez, said Naruto, well I hope we meet again Naruto-kun, said Rainer before taking off. Bye Ruto-kun, said Middlet before taking off, see you later Naru-kun, said Kala Warner before taking off. Sona kept her eye on where the, the fallen angels had left in order to be sure they were gone while also being focused on healing Naruto, it was now that she was extremely glad that her family were the best healers in the underworld, Naruto I am sure you have questions, said Sona before she was interrupted. Not really I've always known of the supernatural world, said Naruto surprising Sona, she was also happy about this as him already knowing about the supernatural world would make it easier to ask him to join her peerage and tell him about herself. Well in that case allow me to tell you this, my name isn't Suna Shitori, it's Sona Sitri and I am a high class devil, said Sona. Wow. I figured you were a devil but I didn't think you used a fake name, you must be an heiress or something like that, said Naruto. That is correct. I am the heiress of the Sitri clan. Naruto how much do you know about devils and the peerage system? Asked Sona. I actually know quite a bit about devils but I only know a little about the peerage system. I know what it is and its purpose, said Naruto. He was silent for a while before he decided to bring something up. You know I am a little surprised you didn't use me being near death in order to bring me into your peerage, said Naruto. While most devils would do that you're my friend Naruto and I'd prefer you join my peerage by choice rather than me taking advantage of the situation. Said Sona while looking Naruto in the eye. Naruto nodded in appreciation at this as he remembered how Rias had turned Issei while he was unconscious and almost dead. Once Sona had finished healing him the water fell from Naruto's body though he was somehow completely dry. Now that you are heal and out of danger I ask you, Naruto Yegerjakes, will become a member of my peerage? Asked Sona. Naruto simply stared at Sona for a few moments before a small smile came to his face. Sure Sona-chan, I'd be honored to be a part of your peerage. Said Naruto. Sona blushed a bit at the Chan suffix being added to her name again but then summoned her evil pieces and started to gauge which piece would work for him. She first tried a single pawn but when that didn't work she tried multiple pawns and when all three of her remaining pawns didn't work she tried her last remaining piece, a mutated rook. The mutated rook reacted to Naruto and this made Sona happy that she would be able to have Naruto in her peerage, she started the process to turn Naruto into a devil and when the mutated rook sunk into Naruto's chest the deed was done. Congratulations Naruto as you are now a reincarnated devil and my rook, said Sona. Thanks Sona-chan and while I have some things to tell you, I am about to pass out from this long day, said Naruto before his eyes rolled into the back of his head and he fell forward only to be caught by Sona. After being stabbed four times and somehow staying alive I am surprised you didn't pass out sooner, rest now Naruto-kun and I'll take care of you, said Sona before she realized Naruto never told her where he lived. Naruto groaned as light from the sun came in from the window and struck him directly in the face. Grumbling a bit he opened his eyes and found himself in a room he didn't recognize but at least he still had his clothes on. He then got out of the bed and found two doors, the first one he opened lead to a bathroom so he decided to freshen up a bit before facing the day. Naruto was okay with doing this as he remembered agreeing to be a part of Sona's peerage but he didn't get to tell her where he lived so he assumed she brought him somewhere she knew he would be safe. After he finished freshening up he went out the second door and was surprised to find himself in the student council office with Sona sitting behind her desk. Ah Naruto you're finally awake, said Sona, yeah I am awake, though I didn't know this office had a hidden room, said Naruto. Yes, I usually use that room to sleep in when I have to pull an all-nighter in order to finish my paperwork, now before you passed out last night you said you had some things to tell me, said Sona while getting out a pen and some paper in order to take notes if she needed to. Yeah I do. You see the reason I've always known of the supernatural world is because of this, said Naruto as he let a long tail come out from under his jacket, it was crimson red with a light blue tip matching his hair, and his pupils became slits. You're a yukai, said Sona writing this down for future training plans. Yes, a panther yukai to be precise, but I was only half yukai when you reincarnated me, thanks to me being born half human I also have a sacred gear, said Naruto. Interesting. Can you tell me the name of your sacred gear, its class, and what it does, and also can you tell me how you were able to hide that you were a yukai and had a sacred gear? Asked Sona. Of course Sona-chan, 
My sacred gear's name is Destruction Pantera. I can't really tell you its class as while it could be considered a longinus it could also be considered a subspecies. It does have the spirit of a powerful beast inside of it and takes the shape of a sword. But there are other sacred gears similar to mine out there as I've met a girl with one. As for what Pantera can do well as I am sure you know that as a Yukai I have the ability to use Chakra which is the combination of physical and spiritual energy. Pantera allows me to solely use the spiritual side of Chakra in order to perform attacks and other feats. It also directly affects my body making me stronger, faster, and more durable than most could hope to be. As for how I was able to hide myself, I've trained myself in order to be able to suppress my chakra to the point that I simply seem like a normal human to anyone that tries to sense me and since my scared gear works off the spiritual side of my chakra it gets suppressed too, explained Naruto. I see. What are these abilities your sacred gear gives you? Asked Sona after getting a fresh sheet of paper. One ability is called Pesquisa. It's a sensory ability that increases my already high sensing ability thanks to being half Yukai. With it there is almost nothing I can't sense, the next one is a passive ability called Hiero. It gives me skin as hard as steel which also increases my physical attacks effectiveness. After that is my Sero, it is basically a blast of concentrated spiritual energy. Then there is my Bala, it is pretty much the same as a Sero but it is not as powerful but much faster. Then we have my Gran Ray Sero, as I am sure you can guess it's a Sero but with my blood added to it making it almost 5 times stronger than my normal Sero, there's an ability that allows me to teleport by opening what I like to call a Garganta, and finally we have my ability of Sonido, it's a speed ability that allows me to move at extremely fast speeds, explained Naruto, the spirit sealed inside of his sacred gear actually taught him about the Sero, Gran Ray Sero, and Garganta abilities. Hum. You'll have to demonstrate these abilities for me at some point so that I may have a better understanding of them, is there anything else? Asked Sona. Yeah. I am also able to use Senjutsu. I wouldn't call myself a master but I can use it without losing myself, said Naruto. Well that's good to know. Now allow me to explain some things to you, said Sona as she started to explain Devil Society in detail. What each evil piece did, which piece he was, and the duties he now had. Well that should be all for now Naruto as classes will be starting soon. If you should need to address me in public please use my alias, I'll also send someone to get you after classes are over so you can get started on your duties, said Sona. Very well, I'll see you later Sona-chan, said Naruto leaving a blushing Sona behind, it didn't take long for Naruto to get to his class and take his seat, it also didn't take long for his girlfriends to find him and take the empty seats next to him. Good morning Naruto-kun, said Kates and Murayama at the same time with smiles on their faces, Kates was a beautiful young woman with fair skin salmon-colored hair, reddish-brown eyes, a slim figure, and C-cup breasts, Murayama was beautiful in her own right with fair skin, chestnut-brown hair done in two pigtails, amber eyes, a slim figure, and C-C-cup breasts, both wore the Kuo Academy girls' uniform. Morning girls, how's it going? Asked Naruto, fine but that pervert Issei was acting weird when we saw him earlier, he kept talking about some imaginary girlfriend named Yuma and the worst part was he almost made Murayama cry when he said that she and her friends had killed you last night, but I kept her from crying by telling her that our Naruto-kun was way too tough to be killed, said Kates. Despite this Naruto could tell that she was just as worried about him as she was saying Murayama was so in order to console them a bit he learned over and gave them both a gentle kiss on the lips that had caused both of them to moan softly. You're damn right I am too tough. Neither of you worry about what that pervert says because as you can see I am here and I am fine, said Naruto. Deciding that he could afford to be a little more affectionate with them Naruto started having a make-out session with them with him switching between them every minute, while he was kissing one the other was kissing his neck. Kates and Murayama were happy about this because while he was affectionate with them it was rare for Naruto to be this affectionate with so many people around. The fact that he was doing this now showed them that he noticed how worried they were about him and this was his way of showing he appreciated their concern and that he truly cared about them. The three had completely immersed themselves in each other to the point that they didn't even feel the stares of their fellow classmates. The boys hated Naruto more than they've ever hated anything before while the girls wished they had a boyfriend to show them that kind of affection. After a couple of minutes the couple finally stopped their make-out session with the girls blushing brightly, moments later class finally started but the girls found it hard to focus as they kept reliving the make-out session in their heads. The rest of the day went by like any other day with the exception of Issei walking around asking about Yuma and Rios' shocked expression when she saw him though she tried to hide it. Naruto chose to ignore her for now and when Issei tried to ask him about Yuma Naruto simply punched him in the face and told him not to talk to his girlfriends anymore before walking off. 
It was now the end of the day and Naruto was in class waiting for the bell to ring, before the bell could ring someone walked into the room, she was a beautiful young bespectacled woman standing at 56 with fair skin, long straight black hair that went down to her knees with split bangs, a great figure, and d-cup breasts, she wore the Kuo Academy girls uniform with light blue semi-rimmed glasses, this young woman is Tsubaki Shinra, the vice president of the student council. Naruto-san. I am here to bring you to Suna-sama, said Tsubaki. Naruto simply nodded before he stood up and walked over to her but before they could leave Katase and Murayama ran up to them. Naruto-kun why are you going to go see Suna-sama? asked Katase. You're not in trouble are you Naruto-kun? asked Murayama. Naruto quickly gave both of them a gentle kiss before smiling softly at them. Don't worry girls I am not in trouble. Suna just wants to talk to me. I'll talk to you both later, said Naruto before walking off with Tsubaki. While walking the two ran into Kiba Yuto and Issei. Issei seemed to smirk at Naruto thinking he was in trouble but Naruto just ignored them with Kiba doing the same. Though he did glance at Tsubaki, Tsubaki used to have a crush on Kiba but then she met and got to know Naruto, as she learned more and more about Naruto her feelings for Kiba just seemed to fade away and her feelings for Naruto started to form. When they finally reached the student council office Tsubaki opened the door and led Naruto inside where he saw Sona sitting behind her desk with the rest of her peerage around the room. There was Momo Hanakai, a beautiful girl with fair skin. Blue-green eyes, white hair, a slim figure, and D-cup breasts. Rei Kusaka, a beautiful girl with lightly tanned skin. Light brown eyes, long light brown hair that ends in two short braids with a blue headband. A slim figure, and CC cup breasts, Tomo Meguri a beautiful girl with peach-colored skin. Brown eyes, shoulder-length reddish-brown hair, a slim figure with wide hips. And BB cup breasts, Benia, a cute girl with pale skin. Long blue hair tied in a braid, sleepy golden eyes, a petite figure, and a cup breasts, Subasa Yura, a beautiful tall girl with fair skin, shoulder-length blue hair, blue eyes, a slim figure, and B cup breasts, Ruruko Nomura, a cute girl with fair skin, long brown hair in twin ponytails, green eyes, a slim figure, thick thighs, wide hips, and b-cup breasts, and finally was Saji Genshiru, a young man with lightly tanned skin, grey eyes, short blonde hair, and a fit build. Ah Tsubaki, Naruto, I am glad you made it now please have a seat, said Sona, Naruto sat on the couch between Tomo and Ruruko while Tsubaki went to stand behind Sona, now as I am sure you've guessed by now but this is my peerage, Tsubaki is my queen, Momo and Rei are my bishops, Tomo and Benia are my knights, Subasa is your fellow rook, and Ruruko and Saji are my pawns, everyone as you know this is Naruto Yegerjakes, my new rook, said Sona. Hum, a fellow rook huh? Well then I look forward to training with Naruto-kun. Said Subasa. Subasa thought Naruto was cool guy as he never really bothered anyone unless they were a pervert. Then he kicked your ass. Tsubasa always thought Naruto was handsome but she thought he was drop dead sexy when she saw him get muddy. It happened when Naruto was chasing the perverted trio around for peeping on the girls kendo club again, but it had rained the day before so they had started throwing mud at him, this only pissed Naruto off more and caused him to beat them down while being covered in mud, Tsubasa found she couldn't get the image of a muddy Naruto out of her head for a long time. Naru kun Sonasama said that you're half yukai and have a tail, can we see please? asked Ruruko in excitement, Ruruko liked Naruto because she found him cool and funny, especially when he would chase the perverted trio around. I don't see why not, I don't like keeping my tail hidden anyway and I'd like to train with you Tsubasa, said Naruto as he let his tail out, Naruto would come to regret doing this because as soon as his tail was in sight Ruruko reached over and started petting it, Naruto stiffened up before going slack and letting out a deep purr that he would forever regret letting escape his lips. Everyone stared at Naruto with wide eyes while Ruruko continued to pet and caress his tail. Wanting to try something Ruruko brought Naruto's tail up to her lips and started to kiss and nibble lightly on it, this caused Naruto to actually let out a moan and they all saw something move in his pants, causing all the girls to blush, Ruruko paused when she saw Naruto Jr. move and that pause allowed Naruto to come out of his little trance and blush brightly before pulling his tail away from Ruruko, making her pout. You all saw and heard nothing, said Naruto. The girls just continued to stare at him with their blushes while Saji was trying to hold in his laughter, the handsome bad boy of Kuo purrs and becomes excited when you play with his tail, it was hilarious to him, laugh if you want to and he'll come over there and stomp your nuts, threatened Naruto, Saji was quick to shut up. Well now that we're all done, Naruto you need to hand out these flyers in order to form contracts with humans. 
said Sona as she placed a stack of summoning flyers on her desk. Naruto walked up to Sona's desk but before he could take the flyers she grabbed his hand and placed her family's crest on it. This shows that you are a servant of the House of Citri and will also allow you to use magic circles in order to teleport the location that you desire, explained Sona. Naruto nodded before taking the flyers and putting his tail away. Thank you Sona-sama, cheered the girls of Sona's peerage as soon as Naruto was gone. Sona blinked at this as she looked at her peerage strangely, what did I do? asked Sona. You brought the best guy on campus into the peerage, said Momo, not noticing Saji looked down depressed. Saji knew that the girls of the peerage had it bad for Naruto. Even Sona and Saji hated that since he liked Sona, sure he and Naruto were sort of friends but that didn't mean he would roll over and let Naruto have Sona. Momo liked Naruto because he was a good listener and was honest. Momo knew that she was a beautiful girl but whenever some of the boys at school would compliment her she knew they were comparing her to Rias and Akano. Naruto never compared her to anyone and even once told her Momo is Momo, Rias is Rias, and Akano is Akano there is no comparison between the three of you, it's like comparing three snowflakes, all three are beautiful but they are not the same, ever since then Momo had a crush on Naruto. Now we can get to know him even better and maybe, just maybe, hell be willing to share his heart with us, said Rea. Rea liked Naruto because he always seemed to have time for her since she was so soft-spoken and polite people would often try to use that against her but then Naruto would show up out of nowhere and get her out of the situation, at first she thought it was just some small form of hero worship but as they spent time talking and getting to know each other she knew her feelings were real. Plus now we know he purrs when you play with his tail, squeal Benia and Ruruko, Sona gave the girls a small smile while she shook her head at them though she had to admit that they were right, adding Naruto to the peerage was a great choice. In the city Naruto was surprised at how easy this was. He didn't even have to say anything and people were just taking his flyers thought they were mostly women, he was already down to his last couple of flyers, Naruto then saw Issei running around with a picture asking people if they've seen the girl in it, Naruto planned to ignore Issei since he didn't feel like dealing with the pervert but Naruto also noticed that it seemed like Rias didn't tell Issei that he was a devil now, just as Naruto was about to walk off Issei saw him. Huh. What are you doing here you bastard? asked Issei. Just handing out flyers, said Naruto holding up one of his flyers as a woman walked by and took it. Why are you doing that? Asked Issei not really caring but Kiba did ask him if he had noticed anything strange about Naruto. Issei told him no and he didn't care, he was more focused on finding out why no one seemed to remember his girlfriend Yuma. None of your business perv, answered Naruto with a smirk. Shut up. How are you even alive? I saw Yuma and her friends stab you and I know people can't survive being stabbed four times asked Issei. I have no idea what you're talking about, said Naruto before walking off, I may not like Rias but she purposely allowed Issei to be killed and now she's purposely not told Issei that he's a devil, what is going through your head Rias? Naruto asked himself in thought, Naruto spent only a few more minutes passing out the rest of his flyers and funny enough he actually ran into Kates and Murayama and gave them his last two flyers, now though he was sitting back in the student council office waiting to be summoned by one of the people that took his flyer while Sona explained exactly what he was supposed to do. So basically once I complete their wish I get them to sign the contract and it will automatically absorb their sin, said Naruto. That's as correct Naruto, said Sona, well I am glad that I won't be taking anyone's soul, said Naruto. Most devils don't deal in souls anymore and the only time we do is when someone's wish is so great that it requires a higher price than just their sin. Examples would be if they wanted powers, to live longer, or to bring someone back from death, but in order to make those wishes come true you would have to be a truly powerful devil, said Sona. I see, said Naruto before the mark on the back of his hand started to glow. Well I guess someone is summoning me, I'll see you later Sona-chan, said Naruto as he stood up and then disappeared in a magic circle, he would have used his garganta but he didn't want to scare his summoner. K-A-T-A-S-E house. Bedroom Katase stood in her bedroom wearing her night clothes which consisted of a white crop top, dark pink pajama pants, and fuzzy pink slippers, in her hand was the flyer she got from Naruto and it was currently glowing blue, the flyer said it would summon a devil in order to grant her wish but she didn't think it would actually work, a magic circle appeared and out of it came Naruto. Kata chan you summoned me? asked Naruto when he saw her. Naruto-kun, you're a devil? asked Katase. Naruto sighed at this before he sat her down and explained everything to her and even showed her his tail, just like Ruruko she started to pet and caress his tail which caused him to purr and her to squeal, are you going to take my soul now Naruto, asked Kates, Naruto winced a bit at the lack of kun to his name. Of course not Kata-chan, 
That's not how this works and I would take your soul even if it was like that, said Naruto. Really? asked Kates. Really? I care about you deeply and could never hurt you. I'd even go as far to say that I, I love you Kates-chan, said Naruto seriously. At his words Kates threw herself into Naruto's arms and buried her head into his chest as she hugged him tightly. Oh Naruto-kun, I love you too. Said Kates. They held the hug for a few minutes before Kates pulled back and planted a kiss on Naruto's lips. Naruto quickly returned the kiss while pulling her body flush against his. They would have continued if Kataz's door hadn't suddenly opened. Standing in the door was Murayama in her own night clothes which consisted of yellow short shorts and a black t-shirt. Naruto-kun, what are you doing here? Why do you have a tail? Asked Murayama in shock. Naruto quickly moved from Kates and covered Murayama's mouth. Could you not yell that out? because that would be really helpful, and what are you doing here Mura-chan? Asked Naruto. Don't worry Naruto-kun my parents are away on business and won't be back till tomorrow, Murayama is here because we were studying together when we just decided to have a sleepover, oh and Murayama the flyers Naruto-kun gave us are real, they'll really allow us to make wishes. Said Kates. So you really summoned a devil in order to wish for Naruto-kun to come here? Asked Murayama. Kates shook her head no and explained everything to Murayama that Naruto explained to her. Murayama even petted Naruto's tail which caused her to squeal much like Kates did. Wait, Kates you didn't make a wish so you still have to do that, said Murayama. She's right, so what do you wish of me Kata-chan? Asked Naruto. Kates looked at Murayama who nodded to her before returning her attention to Naruto. Naruto-kun, I wish for you to take our virginity, said Kates with a blush on her face. She and Murayama had been thinking about this for a long time and had decided that they wanted to give their virginitas to Naruto and they wanted to do it at the same time. Naruto simply stared at his two girlfriends for a few moments before he smirked at them. Your wish is my command, said Naruto before he pulled both girls to him and started a make-out session like they did in class this morning. Lemon. Kates moaned as Naruto kissed her first with his tongue instantly invading her mouth and dominating her own tongue. She moaned even louder when she felt Naruto's left hand start to play with her plump ass. Kates knew that between her and her friend Murayama had the bigger breasts but she had a bigger ass and apparently Naruto liked it. Murayama was busy kissing and sucking on Naruto's neck while rubbing her body against his. She moaned loudly when she felt his right hand start to play with her right breast. Naruto finally broke his kiss with Kates and switched to Murayama, giving her the same soul-searing kiss he did to Kates and Murayama's knees went weak from the intensity of the kiss. Both girls felt their bodies getting hotter and hotter as their lover continued to kiss them and play with their bodies. They also felt a heat in their cores that was growing into a burning inferno as their juices started to trickle from their lower lips. Soon they helped each other take off Naruto's jacket and top letting them gaze at his hard and toned body. They shivered as they ran their hands over his hard and defined pecs and Kates sensually licked her lips when she felt his rock hard six pack abs. Murayama then grabbed his face and started another intense makeout session with him while Kates worked on taking off his pants. Naruto was soon left in his dark blue boxers, making out with Murayama. While Kates was on her knees in front of his cloth covered cock, she rubbed it a bit, feeling the heat it produced before standing up and gently moving Naruto and Murayama to her bed. Once Naruto was sitting on the bed, Murayama and Kates were standing in front of him before taking off their tops. Kates had on a white and pink striped bra while Murayama didn't wear a bra and therefore her full breasts and hard pink nipples were exposed to Naruto. They then took off their bottoms showing Naruto that Kates was wearing panties that matched her bra while Murayama wore yellow panties with blue dots. Do you like what you see Naruto-kun? Asked Kates as they saw the tent in Naruto's boxers twitch. Of course I do, my girls are so sexy, said Naruto with growl in his voice, his animal instincts were taking hold of him and ordering him to ravage the girls in front of him. Murayama sat on the bed next to Naruto and started kissing his neck while he played with her breasts and Kates got on her knees in front of Naruto and started to take off his boxers. Once they were down both girls eyes widened when they saw Naruto's cock, it was 10 inches long and wasn't even fully erect yet, Kates blushed deeply as she was inches away from her boyfriend's cock, she had had many wet dreams about this but it was way different in real life, remembering some of the research she did for this situation Kates slowly reached forward with her right hand and started to slowly and firmly stroke Naruto's cock thus causing Naruto to groan pleasantly. Oh Naruto-kun, your cock is so hard and hot in my hand, it's burning the palm of my hand as I stroke it, said Kates as she started to speed up her stroking, does it feel good Naruto-kun? asked Kates. Fuck yeah Kata-chan, your hand is so soft and warm, groaned Naruto, 
Kate smiled at the fact that she was bringing her boyfriend pleasure. She decided to take things further and started licking his shaft. Um, Naruto kun, your cock tastes so good. It might just become my new favorite treat, said Kate, letting her inner dirty girl out while Naruto continued to groan. Naruto placed one hand on Kata's head while he leaned down and started to suck Murayama's breasts and lick her nipples. Ah, Naruto k and my breasts are sensitive. Ah, ah, Kata chan Naruto kun is tasting my breasts. Moaned Murayama. Hearing her best friend's moans actually turned Kates on even more and to the point that she took three inches of Naruto's cock into her mouth and swirled her tongue around the head. This caused Naruto to start to nibble on Murayama's nipple while pushing Kataza's head further down his cock until six inches were in her mouth. Oh Naruto, you're making me so hot. My pussy juice is soaking my panties. Moaned Murayama as she felt her juices run down her legs and soak not only her panties but also the bed. Kates was getting soaked too as her friend's dirty words and the big dick in her mouth were really turning her on. Murayama moaned in disappointment when Naruto stopped sucking on her breasts but then found herself laying on the bed as Naruto ripped her panties off, exposing her glistening pink pussy with a small tuft of brown hair above it, spreading her legs a bit more Naruto got closer to her pussy then took a big whiff of it, drowning himself in her sweet scent while he continued to enjoy Kataza's tight throat, Naruto-kun, don't smell my pussy it's embarrassing said Murayama with her cheeks flaming. You don't need to be embarrassed Mura-chan, your pussy smells delicious, in fact it's making me hungry, said Naruto in a husky voice with his pupils becoming slits, he then started kissing and licking her outer lips before sticking his tongue deep inside her and eating her out while his hand played with her exposed clit. Ah, yes Naruto-kun eat my pussy. Kata-chan, Naruto-kun's tongue is deep in my hot wet pussy screamed Murayama as she felt Naruto's tongue lick all the sensitive spots in her pussy. Kates took Naruto's cock out of her mouth with a loud pop and seeing that the cock was now fully erect at 12 inches, Naruto-kun, fuck my throat pussy, fuck my throat pussy rough while you eat Mura-chan's tight little pussy. Said Kates with a lustful voice, Naruto didn't need to be told twice as he quickly shoved all 12 inches down her tight throat while continuing to eat Murayama. Kates was in heaven as Naruto roughly fucked her throat, she could feel his balls slap against her chin and his shaft stretching her throat to its limit and she loved every second of it as she continued to accept him down her throat, it's so good, if this is what it feels like in my mouth and throat then I can't wait for him to destroy my pussy with this monster he calls a dick, thought Kates. This lasted for another five minutes before Murayama couldn't hold back anymore, Naruto-kun, I can't hold back anymore. You're gonna make me come, I am gonna come, I am gonna come, I am, coming screamed Murayama as she released her juices into Naruto's mouth and her world went white, the taste of her juices and the feel of it running down his throat caused Naruto to release his own cum straight into Kataza's stomach, Kates tried to swallow all of Naruto's cum but it was too much for her so she pulled off his dick causing it to spray all over her face and chest. Kates swallowed what was still in her mouth with a moan while rubbing the rest of his cum into her skin, ah Naruto-kun, your cum tastes so good and it's so warm and thick, I can't take it anymore Naruto-kun. I want it, I want your big dick inside me. Fuck me. Fuck me right now and claim me as yours, said Kates as she stood up and ripped off her bra and panties, her lust had fully taken over, her breasts were perky and capped with diamond hard light pink nipples while her pussy was clean shaven and dripping with her juices. She suddenly found herself laying on the bed on her back next to Murayama with Naruto on top of her, Naruto kissed her passionately while rubbing his hard cock against her lower lips, ah, no not in this position Naruto-kun. I want my first time doggy style, or is the correct term panther style in this case? Asked Kates with a sexy smirk after she broke the kiss. Oh panther style is without a doubt the correct term, said Naruto with a growl as he flipped her over onto her hands and knees while admiring how her ass jiggled from the movement, it'll go in gently but once you get used to the pain then I am pounding you into the bed, said Naruto. Kates shivered at this as the very idea of being fucked that roughly turned her on and made her even wetter than she already was. She looked back at him with lustful eyes and shook her juicy ass at him. Oh you know just what to say to get me hot Naruto-kun, said Kates. Naruto simply smirked before he started to slowly insert his cock into her pussy. Kates moaned as inch after inch was fed into her pussy until Naruto finally reached her barrier. Do it quick Naruto-kun and get it over with, said Kates. Naruto nodded and pulled back some before spearing every inch of his cock into her pussy and completely destroying her barrier, holy fucking shit. Kates screamed in pain as she lost her virginity and a little blood trickled out of her. 
Her scream managed to wake Murayama from her pleasure-induced mini-coma in order to see her best friend on her hands and knees with every inch of their shared boyfriend's cock stuffed into her tight formerly virgin pussy. She then watched as Naruto leaned over Katase in order to kiss and suck on her neck in order to distract her from the pain she was no doubt going through. Murayama crawled her way over to her friend and boyfriend and held Katase's hand in order to help her through the pain as well. They stayed like that for a few minutes until Katase started to feel the pain fade away and be replaced by pleasure. All right Naruto-kun, pound me. Ah. Katase said before screaming in pleasure as Naruto did as he said he was going to do, pound her into the bed. The sound of Naruto's hips crashing into her ass cheeks filled the room alongside her screams of pleasure as Naruto held nothing back as he fucked her. Fucking shit Kata-chan. Your pussy is so hot and tight. Growled Naruto as he fucked her with reckless abandon while also slapping her ass cheeks every now and again. Yes Naruto-kun. Yes. Fuck. 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 You're fucking me so hard and deep. I love it. I love how your dick is reshaping my tight pussy. Moaned Katase. Murayama licked her lips as she watched her friend get pounded and scream like a cheap whore. She had never seen Katase like this before, she then got an idea as she remembered how Naruto reacted to having his tail petted. She reached behind Naruto and started to stroke his tail and the results quickly showed themselves. The moment Naruto felt Murayama stroke his tail his grip on Kataz's ass increased and his hips went into overdrive. Murayama took things further as she started to suck on the tip of his tail while stroking the base, this caused Naruto to growl loudly as he increased the power behind his thrusts as he leaned over and grabbed Kataz's swinging breasts while biting into her neck. Aaaahhh, Naruto-kun you're being so rough with me, harder, fuck me harder, punish my pussy and teach it that it belongs to you and only you, moaned Katase. Does it really feel that good Kata-chan? Does Naruto-kun's big thick dick feel so good that it turns you into this dirty slutty girl? Asked Murayama. Yes, it feels so fucking good, it'll be Naruto-kun's dirty little slut whenever he wants, he's the only one allowed to stretch my pussy like this. Oh fuck Naruto-kun, keep punishing me, I am so close to coming all over your big dick. Moaned Katase. Who do you belong to Kata-chan? Who owns this body? Asked Naruto with a deep growl in his voice. You Naruto-sama, I belong to you and this body is yours, you're the only man that will see me like this, screamed Katase, at this point Katase couldn't even keep her tongue in her mouth and her lower body would pop up off the bed with every thrust Naruto made due to the sheer power behind the thrusts. How deep is Naruto-kun inside you? Asked Murayama. Naruto-sama is in my womb, Naruto-sama's big dick has made my womb its new home, moaned Katase. Murayama leaned into Naruto's ear and whispered to him, Kum Naruto-kun, spray your hot kum deep inside Kata-chan's womb, we're both on the pill so you don't need to hold back, fill her up Naruto-kun, whispered Murayama, at this information something in Naruto snapped as apparently he had been holding back as he started fucking Katase even harder. Oh 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 h h h h f f f f u u u u u u c c c k k k k k I am coming, I am coming, I am coming. I am fucking coming Naruto-sama. Katase screamed at the top of her lungs as she came. Naruto shoved his cock deep into Kataz's womb and finally released his seed deep inside of her with a roar that sounded like that of a panther. Katase was in heaven as her lover's hot cum poured into her womb. It felt even better than she dreamed it would. To her this was the perfect way to lose her virginity. For a full minute Naruto pumped Katase full of his cum before it finally stopped though he was still hard. Naruto then slowly pulled out of Katase, causing her to moan before turning to Murayama and kissing her deeply. Murayama moaned at the passion behind the kiss, it's your turn Mura-chan, said after after breaking the kiss. I am not like Kata-chan Naruto-kun, I want my first time to be soft and gentle so please be gentle with me Naruto-kun, said Murayama. Anything for you my dear, said Naruto, the intensity in his eyes was still there but softer, after moving Katase over to the side a bit so she could rest Murayama laid down on her back and parted her legs for Naruto, showing him her dripping wet pussy. Take me Naruto-kun, make me a woman, make me your woman. Said Murayama. Naruto leaned down and kissed her deeply as she wrapped her arms around his neck and he placed his hands on her hips. Murayama moaned as Naruto caressed her body and lined himself up with her entrance before slowly pushing himself into her. She could feel every inch of Naruto's cock as it parted her vaginal walls until it came to her barrier. She buried her face into his neck in order to brace herself for the pain she knew was coming. Naruto quickly broke through her barrier and she screamed into his neck, he made sure to stay still as she got used to the pain while also kissing her neck and continuing to caress her body, it finally happened, I am finally one with Naruto-kun, 
said Murayama while Naruto continued to kiss and caress her. After a few minutes Murayama finally got used to Naruto's size and the pain turned into pleasure, she gave Naruto the go-ahead to start thrusting so Naruto started some slow deep thrusts, damn Mura-chan. Your pussy is so tight, groaned Naruto. Ah, 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 that's because your dick is so big Naruto-kun, oh fuck you're so deep inside my little pussy, moaned Murayama, Naruto growled as he leaned down and took her right nipple into his mouth while one of his hands massaged and played with her other breast causing Murayama to moan even louder. Naruto then felt two soft orbs with hard peaks push into his back while two slender arms wrapped around his chest, looking behind him Naruto saw Katais giving him a seductive smile as she pressed her body into his while he continued to pump into the moaning Murayama. Katais's weight being added to his own caused Naruto to go even deeper into Murayama, has Naruto-sama claimed your womb yet Mura-chan? Asked Katais as she started to lick Naruto's neck while Kum was leaking out of her filled pussy. Ah, ah, yes. Naruto-kun's big dick is kissing the very back of my womb," moaned Murayama, she moaned even louder when Naruto lifted her legs and placed them on his shoulders then picked up his pace, ooh fuck Naruto-kun, you're fucking me so good," moaned Murayama. Um, how does Mura-chan's pussy feel Naruto-sama? asked Katais. It feels really good on my cock, it's so tight, hot, and wet, said Naruto. And how does Naruto-sama's cock feel Mura-chan? asked Katais. It feels fucking amazing. It's so big and thick that it's hitting the back of my womb while stretching my pussy to its limit and it keeps hitting my G spot. Now I understand why you couldn't stop screaming while Naruto kun fuck you. The pleasure is out of this world, moaned Murayama. He's not Naruto kun right now, Mura chan. In this situation, he's Naruto sama. We are his women and he owns our bodies. Your pussy already knows this. Just look at how it accepts Naruto sama's cock without resistance. It knows Naruto sama and his cock are its master. Now it's your turn, tell Naruto-sama how you feel, tell Naruto-sama how he is making you feel," said Katais. Katais then moved away from Naruto so that Murayama could take her legs off his shoulders in order to wrap them around his waist and then she pulled him down to her and kissed him with a great intensity for a whole minute before breaking it. Naruto-sama you make me feel amazing, I know you're holding back because I ask you to be soft and gentle with me and that makes me feel extra special, you're holding back on what you want to do simply to give me the experience I always wanted for my first time. The fact that you were doing this makes me sure that I gave my heart to the right man, I gave my body to the man, I gave my virginity to the right man and I am 100% sure when I say, I love you Naruto-sama. I am your woman and you're my man, no one else will ever see this side of me as you have ruined me for anyone else, I love you so much Naruto-sama, said Murayama. Naruto smiled softly as he pressed his forehead against hers while he continued to drive into her and her legs tightened their grip around his waist, I love you too Mura-chan. I know I don't show it much when there are a lot of people around but I truly do love you and Keita chan you both bring so much joy into my life and I am the luckiest guy in the world that the two of you chose to be with me, I promise I'll do my best to be worthy of your love, said Naruto. Both Murayama and Katais had tears of joy in their eyes at Naruto's words, this was the softer side that Naruto never showed in public, but that made the times he did show his softer side all the more special, you're already worthy Naruto-sama, oh, oh, oh yes Naruto-sama. I am about to come Naruto-sama, come with me and fill my pussy with your love. Moaned Murayama, ah! Screamed Murayama when she finally reached her climax while feeling Naruto release his hot seed into her womb. It took a full minute for Naruto to stop coming before he slowly pulled out, Naruto laid on the bed with Katais on his right and Murayama on his left, both of their pussies leaking his cum as they clung to his sides. Lemon and the three of them rested in that position for a good 30 minutes with neither of them saying anything as they just enjoyed the afterglow of their love making. Naruto kun, you said that devils can have harems, right? asked Katais finally breaking the silence. Yeah, why do you ask? asked Naruto, if you get a harem, will you forget about us? asked Murayama. She and Katais wasn't against Naruto having women other than them, they already share him with each other, so why not other women as well? They just didn't want to be forgotten if he attracted women that were more beautiful and bustier than them, like Rias and Akano. Of course I want forget you too. I love the both of you and no matter what happens in the future that want change, in fact if it will set your minds at ease then I promise that I will never forget either of you, said Naruto. Both of the girls smiled at this as they knew Naruto took his promises seriously and would rather die than break them, it was something else that they loved about him, they both gave him a kiss on the cheek and then snuggled deeper into him. So when will you be leaving Naruto-kun, not that I really want you to that is? asked Katais. You sure you don't want me to leave, cause it sure sounds like it, said Naruto. 
I promise it's not like that, I would love nothing more than to go to sleep in your arms then wake up with you still holding me, but I have no idea how early my parents will be getting home and the last thing I want is for them to come in here to check on me and see me naked in bed with you, Mira-chan and I have always shared the bed whenever we had sleepovers so they wouldn't bother to check under the covers. The moment they see you however, the first thing they'll do is pull the covers off and see the three of us naked, said Katase. Good point. Well I got here at 7 and it's 9.30 now so I'll stay till 10 then be on my way, don't forget to sign the flyer though, said Naruto, Kataz's parents actually liked him, well her mother did while her father was constantly on his ass about treating Katase right and to stop dyeing his hair, Naruto tried telling him that his hair wasn't dyed but the man would never believe him, he hadn't had the chance to meet Murayama's parents yet. I signed it while you were fucking Mura-chan so don't worry about that, just rest with us, said Katase. Naruto did just that and enjoyed the feeling of the naked bodies of his lovers pressed up against him. Later with Naruto Naruto was currently walking down a street towards his apartment with his tail out since no one was around, sure he had faster ways of getting home but he wanted to enjoy the cool, crisp, night air and the moonlight. Naruto also had a huge grin on his face and could you really blame him, he just had a threesome with two virgins, well two former virgins but still. On his way home Naruto lost his grin when he felt some familiar energy signatures coming from the park. Heading over there Naruto saw that Issei was there along with the male fallen angel that tried to kill him the other night, Donisik if he remembered right, he also felt Kaneko hiding in the bushes nearby, Naruto guessed she was supposed to be watching Issei, Naruto had to force himself to not laugh at this as he knew how Kaneko felt about perverts and guessed that she hated her current job. Naruto then saw Donisik move to attack Issei who started to run away, but Kaneko didn't move from her spot, Naruto was conflicted as he didn't want to save Issei at all but Donisik had looked down on him and had tried to kill him, Naruto couldn't let him get away with that, in the end Naruto decided to deal with Donisik even if he really, really, didn't want to save Issei. It's over for you little devil, said Donisik as he was about to stab Issei through the stomach, Naruto then suddenly appeared between them in a burst of static and grabbed the spear in his left hand which started to smoke, Naruto noticed that the burning sensation in his hand was worse than it was the other night but chalked it up to being a devil now so light had a much worse effect on him though he was glad that his hiero still offered him a great deal of protection from it. Everyone was surprised by Naruto's sudden appearance but the hidden Kaneko was even more surprised when she saw Naruto's tail. She had always thought that her friend was a simple human which was why her king had ordered the peerage to not waste time on him and to focus on that pervert Issei. She was the only one that didn't listen to that order and befriended Naruto when he approached her. She thought he was really nice and despite the fact that he had two girlfriends he wasn't a pervert, it was also a huge plus in her book that despite her having a petite figure and being so stoic he still treated her like a normal girl, he complimented her, made her laugh, well smirk, brought her treats every now and then, and he knew just the right spot on her head to pet that made her putty in his hands. Now it made sense though because if he was a yukai of the cat variety like her then of course he would know the perfect place to scratch and pet, though now she was wondering why she never felt any chakra from him until now, then it hit her, he was suppressing his chakra to the point that no one would be able to sense it, this thought brought a bunch of questions into her mind but the main one was why he felt a need to hide his chakra. He must have sensed the other supernatural beings in the school, does he know about me then? Kaneko asked herself before going back to watching what was going on. Hey bitch, remember me, said Naruto before giving Donisik a strong right hook that sent him flying back and crashing into a tree, hum, the added strength from the rook piece has thrown off my ability to control my strength, I'll have to work on that, Naruto thought to himself he flexed his hand, he hadn't intended for that punch to be that powerful. Ah shit. Why do you keep hitting me in the face? Yelled Donisik. I actually don't know, there's just something about your face that makes me want to punch it, said Naruto. Why do you have a tail bastard? Asked Issei, really? I save your life, again, and you're still calling me a bastard, you know what, never mind just get the fuck out of here and let me handle this, said Naruto before turning back to Donisi just in time to duck under a swipe from a light spear and counterattack with a punch to the chest, the punch was still stronger than Naruto intended as Donisi flew back and actually went through the tree this time. Damn it. Why did you come to save him again? Asked Donisi as he got up while holding his chest. I didn't come for him. I am here for you. You see last night you tried to kill me and you looked down on me while you did it, I can't let that go as I won't allow anyone to look down me. Especially not someone weaker than me said Naruto with narrowed eyes. Kaneko narrowed her eyes at hearing that this fallen angel had tried to kill her friend last night. She was tempted to leave her hiding spot and go beat the shit out of him for that. But then another thought came to her mind, 
Rias had told them that she had reincarnated Issei last night after he was attacked by some fallen angels. Did that mean that Rias showed up after the fallen angels and Naruto had left Issei to die or that the fallen angels had attacked Naruto somewhere else after they attack Issei? She really didn't want to think of the worst case scenario where Naruto and Issei were dying together and Rias had chosen to save Issei and left Naruto to die, but that seemed like the most likely case since this fallen said that Naruto had tried to help Issei last night, she would have to get answers from Rias or Naruto later. Weaker than you. Last time I checked it wasn't that hard to fight you last time, said Donaseek. Last time you had three others to back you up and I was dead tired and it still took you a while to hurt me, now though I am fully charged and it's one on one. I am gonna grind you into dust," said Naruto. Donasi created six light spears and threw them in Naruto's direction, just die already, yelled Donasi. Naruto caught two of the spears before dodging the rest then breaking the spears in his hands with his grip alone. Sorry but I am not that easy to kill, said Naruto with a grin. You may not be but your friend is, Donasi said with his own grin. Don't call him my friend and what are you talking about? asked Naruto with a confused look before he heard something behind him. Aaahhhh, it hurts even worse than I remember, cried Issei. What the? asked Naruto as he turned and saw Issei had been stabbed through the stomach, again, by one of the light spears, you fucking moron. I told you to get out of here and instead you stayed and watched, yelled Naruto as he couldn't believe the levels of stupidity he was seeing, they were over 9,000. Kaneko deadpanned at this as she was in complete agreement with Naruto, Issei was a fucking moron. She sighed as she was part of the same peerage as said fucking moron and knew that he would only cause trouble later, still though she had a job to do so started to contact Rias. Hey, I don't have to listen to a bastard like you, said Issei before he coughed up some blood, both Naruto and Donasik deadpanned at Issei for his response, now even Donasik could understand why Naruto didn't like Issei. Fuck you Issei, just, fuck you, said Naruto before turning back to Donasik, they were about to fight again but then Donasik dodged a bolt of lightning. Now who getting involved in my shit? Naruto thought to himself, he was seriously getting pissed off now, turning to where the lightning came from he saw Akano, Rias, and Kaneko standing there with Akano having lightning sparking of her hand. Well look at what we have here, said Rias, the Gremory heiress, said Donasik. Look president, Naruto-san has a cute tail, said Akano. I see, well confront him about that later but for now we have a fallen to deal with, said Rias. Naruto stood there listening to Rias and Donasik banter back and forth with an irritated expression on his face, he then noticed Donasik trying to fly away and used Sonido to appear above Donasik, where do you think you're going? said Naruto before delivering a hard axe kick that sent Donasik towards the ground with Naruto following him, when Donasik hit the ground a second later Naruto connected with a punch to the chest that had so much force behind it that the ground under them cratered, I told you that I wouldn't let go of the fact that you looked down on me, said Naruto. Donasi quickly made another light spear and swung it at Naruto's neck, Naruto did nothing but when the spear met his neck the spear shattered, shocking Donasi, Rias, Akano, and Kaneko. Issei had already passed out, Naruto grinned savagely as he started to really beat the shit out of Donasi with chakra enhanced punches, those watching winced at each punch that connected, except for Akano who had a deep blush on her face, Naruto then picked Donasi up and performed three suplexes in a row, this had the effect of breaking Donasi's wings. Donasik was barely conscious as he saw Naruto standing over him. The look in his eyes showed Donasik just how disappointed Naruto was with this fight, it's over Donasik, I am going to finish you with a move my mother taught me, said Naruto as he held his right hand out and the air began to swirl around it until a sphere of swirling chakra the size of a softball formed in his hand, once the attack was fully formed just looking at it caused Naruto to remember when his mom had taught him this attack. Flashback a younger Naruto stood in front of a tall woman with fair skin, deep purple eyes, ankle length crimson red hair, a slim but feminine figure, long legs, wide hips, a bubble butt, and DD cup breasts, she wore a forest green apron over a white blouse, black pants, and blue sandals, this is Kashina Uzumaki Yegerjakez, Naruto's mother. What are you gonna teach me today mom? asked Naruto. Well Naruto-chan as I've told you before due to how faithfully the Uzumaki clan has served the Shinto gods our family were the only humans to be blessed with chakra. When I unlocked my chakra when I was a little girl I created a bunch of super strong techniques in order to protect myself and my family. Though the one I am going to teach you I didn't make until after I met your father, thanks to you having been born half Yukai and a member of Uzumaki clan you have huge chakra reserves, but you didn't have much control over your chakra so I couldn't teach you much about my techniques. 
Now though since your control has improved I am going to teach you one of my best techniques. Said Kashina with an excitement in her voice, she was happy to finally be able to pass down her techniques to her precious baby boy. Wow really? What technique are you going to teach me? Asked Naruto. Here I'll show you, said Kashina as she walked over to a large boulder. She held her hand out and the air started to swirl around it before a sphere of swirling chakra the size of a softball formed in her hand. Naruto was in awe of the sphere but then Kashina reared her arm back then shot in forward until the sphere collided with the boulder. The sphere drilled into the boulder before it popped outward and destroyed the entire boulder. Naruto was blown away by what he had just saw, Kashina smiled brightly as she saw her son's face. That's the technique I am gonna teach you Naruto-chan. It took me years to make it and technically it isn't done yet as I've always wanted to add a nature element to it. I actually modeled this technique after your father's great beast bomb, said Kashina with some sadness seeping into her voice at the mention of her late husband, she still believed that those devils had something special up their sleeves in order to kill her husband, even ten high class devils weren't strong enough to kill a yukai like Grimjow, but that brought up the question of just what did they have in order for them to be strong enough to kill her husband? Naruto was now even further in awe of his mother, she had created that cool technique based off of one of his father's most powerful attacks, Naruto had seen his father's great beast bomb a few times and each time it amazed him at just how powerful his father was, what is your technique called mom? asked Naruto. Kashina smiled at her son before answering, well my little panther prince, my technique is call. Flashback and Rasengan, yelled Naruto as he drove the attack into Donizik's chest. Ah! Screamed Donizik in unbelievable pain as the sphere drilled into his chest, grinding away at flesh and bone as if it was nothing at all. Kaneko and Rias winced at the sound of the mon's screams but also focused on the attack Naruto was using. For Rias the attack was interesting as she could feel the pure power behind it but yet here was Naruto with full control over it. She always knew that Chakra was strong, it was one of the many reasons she was happy Kaneko was a part of her peerage but the girl refused to use the abilities granted to her by her yukai heritage other than her sensing abilities, Rias wasn't an idiot she knew that after what she said to him last night she wasn't exactly in his good graces, but maybe there was another way to get him to use his power to help her. Hum. Maybe Kaneko not focusing on Issei like I ordered is actually a blessing in disguise, if I work this right I should be able to use his friendship with Kaneko to get him to help me, Rias thought to herself. Kaneko was transfixed by the sphere of pure chakra. She had never seen an attack like it before, as a yukai herself she knew just how destructive chakra could be when used for offense. But ever since that the whole situation with her own sister she hadn't used her chakra at all, relying completely on her devil powers ever since Rias turned her. She wondered if she started using her chakra again would she be as strong as Naruto clearly was, if so then maybe she would start using her chakra again, as long as Naruto was there to teach her, Kaneko then glanced at Rias and saw a gleam in the redhead's eyes, a gleam that she didn't like, what's happened to you Rias? When we first met you were so nice and understanding but for the last couple of weeks you've been very cold, power hungry, and manipulative, I don't like this Rias, I want the old Rias back, Kaneko thought to herself. She could tell that something was going on with Rias but for some reason Rias wouldn't tell them. And what was Akano doing during all this? Well she was sexually panting while holding her flaming red cheeks and rubbing her thighs together with her lady juices running down her legs. It was safe to say she was greatly enjoying the pain Naruto was putting the fallen angel through, in fact his last attack and the scream of the fallen angel had actually caused her to climax, I wonder if I can convince Naruto-san to teach me that technique. Ooh the amount of pain he'll be able to cause with it, Akano moaned in her head. For a few moments Naruto's attack continued to grind into Donisik before it finally decided to burst which caused the crater Donisik was in to grow in size while his chest caved in on itself in the shape of a spiral. Naruto stood up and walked away from the now dead body of the fallen angel Donisik, if he was honest Naruto was extremely disappointed with the fight, sure he knew he outclassed Donisik in every way but he at least expected Donisik to put up a better fight for his life than that. There was no strategy or tricks, it was just create a light spear and attack directly, how tired was he last night to actually lose that fight? Mom was right, I train myself way too hard sometimes if I lost to people this week just because I exhausted myself, even if there were a total of four of them, Naruto thought to himself. Before Naruto could walk off and go home he was stopped by the voice of Kaneko, Naruto, called Kaneko. Naruto stopped and looked back at Kaneko, Supko chan said Naruto casually, like he didn't just violently kill someone. Yukai, said Kaneko simply, yes, well half Yukai actually, said Naruto with his tail lazily waving behind him. Nekomata? 
asked Kaneko unsure if she's ever heard of a male Nekomata. Close but no, I am a panther yukai which is why I only have the long tail, you on the other hand, are a Nekomata. Know the way your chakra flows is different you're a Nekosho, said Naruto, his father had hammered into his head early on how to feel out someone's energy is knowing exactly what your opponent was helped greatly in figuring out how to take them down, Rias and Akano were shocked by how fast he figured that out, and just from her chakra flow. I have questions, you have answers, said Kaneko. Naruto grinned at her before he started walking away again. I am sure you do have questions Ko Chan and I'll answer what I can but not tonight. It's already late and we have school tomorrow so find me when you have some free time and well talk, oh and Ko Chan, from the feel of your chakra I can tell that you don't like your heritage too much, I don't know what happened to make this so but I hope you'll tell me at some point, with your white hair I am guessing your tail and ears make you look really cute and I'd like to see that one day said Naruto before disappearing in a burst of static, using Sonido to get home. Kaneko was shocked at what Naruto was able to learn about her from just reading her chakra. Her cheeks gained a little pink to them though when he mentioned that she would look cute with her cat features showing. What she really liked though was that even though he knew that there was a reason she didn't like her Nekosho heritage he wasn't pushing for her to tell him right away and was willing to wait until she felt ready. At this point Kaneko felt something inside of her pulling her towards Naruto. She had felt this pulling before but now that she has seen him fight and heard those words the pull was much stronger, what she didn't know was that that pull was her instincts trying to pull her towards a strong mate. Well that was an interesting interaction, wouldn't you say Rias? asked Akano. Yes it was Akano, tell me Kaneko just how close are you and Naruto-san? asked Rias. I don't want to punch him for calling me Ko-chan, answered Kaneko. I see. I have some questions I want you to ask him for me once you talk to him but for now I need to get Issei healed, said Rias with a gleam in her eyes, Kaneko didn't like that gleam but nodded anyway while hoping that whatever the questions were wouldn't ruin her friendship with Naruto. In the abandoned church what do you mean Donaseek is dead? yelled a female voice, the owner of the voice was a tall woman standing at 63 with pale skin, waist length black hair, bright yellow eyes, a slender but feminine build, a narrow waist, wide hips, long legs, a bubble butt, and H cup breasts, for clothes she wore gold colored stiletto heels, black leather tights, a gold colored studded belt, a black tube top that barely held her breasts back, and a studded collar around her neck, on the woman's back were six black feathered wings. On the ground in front of her were the beaten forms of Rainer, Middelt, and Kalawarner, the woman had savagely beaten them when they told her of Donazik's death, it wasn't that she actually cared about Donazik but the fact that she had lost another servant, we're sorry Lady Sora but Donazik is dead, before he died there was a huge flare of chakra, the same chakra that has been killing the others, said Rainer. Damn it, we knew that the devils were renting this land from the Shinto faction so we should have expected at least one yukai to be here, still we can't afford to keep losing men so I want you three to find that damn yukai and kill them, but do it covertly, we still have a few days before that nun gets here so we don't need the devils to learn of what we're doing, said the now named Sora. As you wish Lady Sora, Rainer, Middelt, and Kalawarner said at the same time. We have to find some way to get word to Azazel Sama, this bitch and Kokabiel are gonna start another war, Rainer thought to herself. Currently we find Naruto laying on his back on the roof of the school. It was lunchtime and he was waiting for Kaneko to come and ask him whatever questions she had. While waiting for Kaneko he was thinking about the interesting day he's had so far. The moment he walked onto campus he could hear people whispering about why Katase and Murayama came to school walking with a limp and a glow around them. The boys instantly thought nothing of the glow and just assumed Naruto had hurt them while the girls came to the conclusion that they and Naruto had finally had sex. Naruto wondered if Katase and Murayama had told everyone that they had sex but didn't really mind if they did as he loved them and if they wanted everyone to know then fine. When he found them and asked if they told everyone they both said no as apparently Katase told them that her limp came from slipping in the shower and Murayama told them that she tripped on her way to school. Nodding at this he gave them both a kiss before going to find Sona in the student council office and handing her his sin-filled flyer. She asked him how the request went and he told her the truth and asked if it was a frequent thing he would have to deal with, Sona told him that it wasn't unusual for devils to get requests like that but that those kind of requests could be turned down, she also told to not make it a habit as her peerage wasn't an escort service, the rest of the day was pretty much normal and lead to where he is now. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts when he heard the door to the roof open and he saw Kaneko there with her lunch bag, he could smell the sweets she had in the bag, Heiko chan, said Naruto. Sup Naruto kun, said Kaneko as she sat next to him and took out a cookie from her bag and started eating, she didn't notice that she had added kun to his name. So last night you said you had questions, what are they? 
asked Naruto. Kaneko stiffened a bit at this as she remembered the questions Rias wanted her to ask, she was afraid that they would ruin her relationship with Naruto so she decided to save those for last, did you have sex with Kates and Murayama? asked Kaneko bluntly. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the question but decided to answer honestly as Kaneko wasn't a gossip, yeah I did, Kates summoned me through a flyer and her request was to have a threesome with me and Murayama, said Naruto. She summoned you through a flyer, so you're a devil, asked Kaneko. Yeah, reincarnated by Sona who I am guessing you already knew was a devil as well, said Naruto. Yes I knew, when did she reincarnate you? asked Kaneko. The same night Rias reincarnated Issei, said Naruto trying to keep the rage he was feeling out of his voice but Kaneko still picked up on it. Why do you seem so angry with Rias, Issei I can understand, but Rias? asked Kaneko. Naruto looked at Kaneko for a few moments before sighing and then telling her about Rias leaving him to die and the things she said to him. Kaneko was not happy about this at all if the clenching of her fists were anything to go by, this also reinforced her idea that something was going on with Rias as the Rias she knew would never say something like that to anyone, Naruto-kun I am sorry for what Rias said to you but please forgive her, there's just something going on with her, said Kaneko. Not a chance, my forgiveness isn't something I just hand out like candy. You have to earn it and so far Rias has done nothing to earn it, and as for her going through something, I don't give a shit about that, just because you have some problems doesn't mean you can act like a bitch and say whatever you want to people, said Naruto leaving no room for argument. Kaneko sighed as she figured Naruto would say something like that and she couldn't really blame him. Technically Rias whole peerage was full of orphans as her parents were dead, Akano hated her father and wouldn't even acknowledge that he was her father, Kiba's parents were an unknown but they were pretty sure they were dead, and Gaspar's relationship with his father was strained at best, so as far as parents went the only ones that really had any parents were Rias and Issei, Kaneko took a deep breath as she prepared to ask the questions that Rias wanted her to ask. Can you use Senjutsu? asked Kaneko, I am no master of it but I can use it without losing control, said Naruto. Did you know about me being a devil before last night? asked Kaneko. I knew about every devil in our school the moment I stepped on campus, none of you did a good job in actually hiding your power, said Naruto. If that's so then why didn't you tell any of us that you were a yukai? asked Kaneko. I didn't feel the need to, plus I also knew about the peerage system and I didn't want to be looked at as some new toy to be collected, said Naruto. Yet you allowed Sona to reincarnate you, said Kaneko. Sona also became my friend when she thought I was nothing more than a simple human and when I was injured she healed me first then gave me the option of being reincarnated or not. Rias left me to die and instead of healing Issei and then giving him a choice she reincarnated him and then continued to use him as bait for the fallen, said Naruto with a snarl in his voice and his eyes narrowed, Kaneko flinched a bit at this but she knew Naruto wasn't really mad at her, she knew asking these questions had the chance of hurting her relationship with Naruto but she really hoped that it would still be intact after this last question. How did your parents die? asked Kaneko. Naruto stiffened at the question and looked at Kaneko with hard and cold eyes. Kaneko didn't like those eyes being directed at her. They made her feel like a small kitten being glared at by a huge beast. She had only seen these eyes when Naruto would catch the perverted trio peeking on the girl's locker room. A small part of her was mad at Rias because those eyes are now directed at her. My dad died when a group of high class devils tried to force him into one of their peerages. Though he managed to kill all of them my mom and I didn't understand how they managed to kill him as my dad was far from weak. He was actually very close to being Satan class in power, later my mom and I were attacked by fallen angels, we fought and were doing fine for a while but my mom was human and we were no match for a ten winged fallen, I was forced to watch as she was decapitated in front of me and then I was left alive so that the bastard could hunt me down later, said Naruto while tightly clenching his fists. Kaneko looked down as she had forced her friend to talk about something so personal and painful, she couldn't even remember her mother and father but Naruto had been forced to live through his father being murdered and then being forced to watch as his mother was killed, Naruto-kun, said Kaneko. What, said Naruto harshly, he didn't mean to be harsh with her but talking about what happened to his parents would always put him in a bad mood. Kaneko flinched a bit at his tone but could understand that he wasn't much in the mood for talking, she took a deep breath before deciding to do something she never thought she would do. She allowed her white cat ears and her her tail to show. Naruto's eyes widened at this as he really didn't expect for her to do something like this. I was right, she does look very cute with her cat features showing, Naruto thought to himself. When I was very young my big sister and I lived on the streets with her stealing in order to feed the both of us. One day a devil came and offered my sister a place to stay and food in our stomachs in exchange for her becoming a part of his peerage. She accepted, 
for a time things were fine but then one day I woke up to a bunch of devils storming the house we were living in and then being taken away and imprisoned. They said my sister had gone crazy after using senjutsu and killed her king before abandoning me, some time later I was before a council of devils and they were going to execute me for my sister's crimes, however before they could make the decision final I was saved by Rias brother and put under Rias care, it took a while but I warmed up to Rias and allowed her to reincarnate me and I also dropped my original name and Rias named me Kaneko, said Kaneko. Naruto said nothing as he took in everything that Kaneko just told him. It was obvious that what she just said was very hard for her. Walking over to her Naruto placed his hand on her head and started to gently rub her ears causing her to purr. He wanted to ask what her real name was but chose not to as she had already revealed enough personal stuff for one day, thank you for telling me this Ko-chan as I can tell it was very hard for you, I won't speak of this to anyone, said Naruto. Kaneko looked up at him with her eyes full of gratefulness causing Naruto to smirk at her, though I feel that there is something very important that you should know, said Naruto. What? asked Kaneko. Your sister didn't lose herself to Senjutsu, said Naruto. What? But but I was told said Kaneko with wide eyes before Naruto interrupted her. You were told by devils, probably the same devils that wanted to kill you for something you didn't do. And the same devils that went and started the mass murder of our people. Said Naruto, Kaneko went quiet at this as she had no comeback for that. Look Ko-chan certain devils may think they know everything but in truth they're just making shit up as they go. No devil will ever understand Senjutsu like a Yukai will. Before he died my dad taught me all he knew about Senjutsu and trust me it was a lot. The main thing that you need to know is that once you lose yourself to Senjutsu there is no turning back until all of the nature chakra has left your body. This means that you become a murderous monster with nothing on your mind but killing. If your sister killed her king and no one else then she didn't lose herself, said Naruto. But, then why did she leave me? Asked Kaneko as she really needed answers. I don't know but from what I understand there are three reasons she could have left you, said Naruto. What are they? Asked Kaneko, the first reason is the worst reason. She left because since she had to take care of you pretty much her whole life she felt burdened by you and decided to just drop you. Said Naruto but he didn't like saying it at all but it was a possibility, he then saw the pain in Kaneko's eyes and then quickly fixed the problem, we can actually throw this reason out because if she felt burdened by you then she wouldn't have even brought you with her when she became a devil, said Naruto. He saw in her eyes that this had helped but some of the pain was still there. What are the other two? Asked Kaneko. The second reason is a much better one, she left because she knew she was a danger to you without knowing how to control Senjutsu. The last reason is that her king did something to provoke her to kill him and was going to take you with her but decided against it as the life as a criminal on the run isn't the life for a child. The problem with these reasons is that we need your sister to confirm any of them, said Naruto. You've given me a lot to think about Naruto-kun, said Kaneko. I am sure I have Ko-chan but we should get going since it won't be long before lunch is over. Oh and next time Rias wants answers about me tell her to grow a pear and ask me herself, said Naruto. How did you know? Asked Kaneko not even trying to deny it. I know how to read people and you've been uncomfortable ever since you asked about me using Senjutsu, said Naruto. I won't do this again, said Kaneko. I don't mind you asking me questions Ko-chan. I just want them to actually come from you, said Naruto. Kaneko nodded at this before they left to rejoin everyone else. The rest of the school day went by normally with Naruto attending the rest of his classes while also spending time with Murayama and Kates. At the end of the school day Naruto told his girls that he would call them later as he had work to do for Sona. They understood and gave him a deep kiss each before walking off while still having a visible limp. After getting to the student council office Naruto started working on his homework as Sona was strict about her peerage keeping their grades up. Once he finished he sat back in his chair in order to relax before feeling a weight on his lap. Looking down he noticed that Benia had sat herself down on his lap while she continued to do her work, he was about to question her on why she did that but when she looked at him with those sleepy gold eyes he just couldn't bring himself to say anything so he just rubbed the top of her head and went back to relaxing. Benia smiled at this while the other girls glared in jealousy at her, even Sona, after a while everyone had finished their work and Sona had an announcement. All right everyone, we have a stray devil to take care of. Said Sona, gather around everyone and I will teleport us to the location that we need to go to. Said Sona, everyone walked over to Sona with Naruto having to take Benny off his lap in order to stand up only to then have Ruruko jump onto his back and having to support her by holding her thighs. Ruruko blushed as his hands sunk into the meat of her thighs but she simply wrapped her arms around his neck and pressed her breasts into his back, Naruto felt this but didn't do anything about it. If she was fine with doing it then why should he stop her, 
The girls glared at Ruruko in jealousy before Sona created a magic circle under them and they disappeared. The outskirts of Kuoh When everyone reappeared they were in the outskirts Kuo in front of an abandoned warehouse. All right everyone our target was reported to be here. His name is Zidonius and he went stray after raping and killing his king's daughter so our job is to make sure that tonight is his last night alive, said Sona. Naruto was already ready for a fight but now he was down right pissed and ready for a slaughter. He could could even feel Pantera stirring inside him. He then stiffened as his senses were going crazy. What's wrong Ruto-kun? Asked Ruruko as she felt him stiffen. I am fine. But Sona-chan you said that Zidonius is our only target right? Asked Naruto. Yes that is correct. Why? Asked Sona, I am sensing a lot more than one devil in that warehouse, said Naruto shocking everyone but also getting them to be even more on guard, even though Ruruko still didn't get off of him. That is strange, stray devils don't usually group together at all since it makes it much easier to find them, how many are you sensing Naruto? Asked Sona. I d say about 40 in total, but there is one that seems to be stronger than the other 39, said Naruto. That one must be our target, everyone get ready for a fight, said Sona. Actually Sona-chan, let me handle this on my own, you've already explained to me what every piece of the evil pieces can do and you did say you would need a demonstration of what I can do, said Naruto with feral grin. Sona stared at Naruto for a few moments before nodding her head, very well Naruto but the moment it looks like you're having trouble we will step in, said Sona seriously. You'll find that I won't need help with something this simple, said Naruto as he put Ruruko down and walked towards the doors of the warehouse. He then kicked the doors in with so much force that they flew off the hinges, this caused every stray devil to turn their attention to him while his feral grin grew even more, you ready to put on a show Pantera? Naruto asked in thought. I am always ready, let the slaughter begin, said the excited female voice of Pantera. Naruto held his right hand up and light particles gathered before a sheathed katana appeared in his hand, the sheath was light blue matching the sword's handle while the guard took the shape of a rigid and crooked S. What is that? Asked Tsubaki, oh that's right I haven't told any of you, Naruto-kun has a sacred gear called Destruction Pantera, it gives him many abilities that I will explain as I see them and as you can see its physical form is that of a sword, said Sona. Well now that I know he has sword skills this means that I can train with him as well, said Tomo, Tomo was usually attracted to younger boys or boys that at least appeared to be younger but things changed when she met Naruto, there was just something about him that she couldn't explain but it drew her in and made her want to know him as they became friends and really got to know each other she couldn't help but start to fall for him. Naruto looked around the area and saw the mutilated bodies of a lot of people though most of them were women, he could only imagine the horrors they suffered through, he could feel the rage inside him boiling and waiting to be unleashed, placing the sheathed blade on his left hip, Naruto started to walk further into the warehouse while remembering something his dad told him. Flashback a younger version of Naruto, five years old, was on his hands and knees with his body covered in bruises from the harsh training he was being put through, most would think that a child so young would be sad or cry because of the condition they were in but that wasn't the case with Naruto, Naruto was pissed because he had lost yet another fight against his dad, Naruto forced himself to stand up despite the pain he was feeling and glared at his dad. Grim Zhao Yegerjakes was a tall and muscular man with light blue hair, and light blue eyes with green lines below them and swaying behind him were two light blue tails showing that he was a master of senjutsu, for clothes he wore white hakama with a black sash around the waist, no shirt but a ragged white jacket with an upturned collar, and black boots with a white trim. That rage you're feeling, I want you to use it, most idiots think that rage in battle will make you sloppy and sometimes they're right but that's only if you let your rage cloud your mind, I don't want you to lose yourself to your rage or to suppress it I want you to direct it, let it make your attacks stronger and your movements faster. Said Grimjow with a feral grin, Naruto just growled before moving to attack his dad once again. Grimjow easily blocked all of Naruto's attacks but he did notice that the attacks were stronger and faster meaning Naruto was doing as he asked. Grimjow then saw something that actually shocked him, he saw Naruto's purple eyes turn gold and the lines under his eyes thicken, he also felt the power Naruto was now using, incredible, he's using senjutsu and he doesn't even know it. Thought Grimjow in surprise, with one final push Naruto got through Grimjow's defense and landed a punch to his chest which caused Grimjow to slide back two feet. At that point Naruto fell to his hands and knees again while panting as his eyes and markings returned to normal, I did it, I finally, hit you, dad, said Naruto before falling to his face. Ha ha ha, that's my boy, was the last thing Naruto heard before he passed out. Flashback end using what his dad had taught him, Naruto was taking control of his rage and directing it at these monsters before him. Well what do we have here, a little pest with a toy, 
and look he's brought a group of little whores for us to enjoy, said one of the stray devils. They smell like virgins so I bet they're nice and tight, said another stray devil. I can't wait to hear them beg for our cum once they're broken in, said another stray devil. I call dibs on the small one with the gold eyes, I bet I can split her in half on my cock, said another. I want the white-haired one, I haven't had a girl with that hair color yet, said another. I want the one with dark blue hair, her breast aren't big but look at that juicy ass, said another. I called the one with the long hair and glasses, those tits will feel so good wrapped around my cock, said another. I want both of the boys, I love seeing the broken look a man has in his eyes when a large cock is forced up his ass, said another. I want the one with the bob cut and glasses, her serious face just screams she needs dick in her life, said another. Naruto was practically a volcano ready to erupt with how boiling hot the rage inside him was with every word they were saying. Pantera wasn't any better as she was practically foaming at the mouth with her rage adding to Naruto's. Sona and the rest of her peerage were very uncomfortable with what was being said but they were also angry that these strays thought that they would just sit back and allow them do these disgusting things to them, they didn't move though as all of them could pretty much feel the raw white hot rage coming from Naruto, they smirked at this as they have all seen what happens when Naruto is pissed. Naruto's body started to glow a light blue color and then everyone in the area felt a some kind of force pushing down on them, a lot of the stray devils fell to their knees because of the pressure while Sona and the others didn't move since the pressure wasn't focused on them, you dare to speak so disrespectfully about my friends, worse you dare to speak about them like that in front of me. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Yeager Yaquez, remember that name well as it is the name of the person that is about to put an end to your pathetic lives, said Naruto as he quickly drew his sword from its sheath. Flashback Kashina stood behind a 8-year-old Naruto as she watched him practice his sword strokes with a bakken. She smiled at his determination as he had been at this for hours and hadn't stopped for any reason. Remember Naruto-kun be sure to follow through with every swing and never hesitate, if you are going to hesitate then don't even bother to draw your sword, your sword can't heal anyone, it can be used to end life, to save life, and to defend your ideals but it can't be used to heal, because of this you must always be sure of yourself and your swings because once you cut something with your sword there is no taking back your cut, said Kashina. Naruto just nodded as he continued to practice his strokes, his mom was teaching him both kenjutsu and kendo, two completely different sword arts since kenjutsu was meant to kill an opponent as fast as possible while kendo was meant to bring balance to oneself as they worked to mold the mind and body, Kashina figured that if Naruto could master both then he would become an unstoppable swordmaster. You also need to remember that your sword is an extension of yourself, it is a part of you. Trust in your sword and never fear it, to fear your sword is to fear yourself and to master the sword you must know and accept yourself, said Kashina. Timeskip 2 Bakans slammed into each other as a 10 year old Naruto spared with Kashina, let your sword guide you from within, let it tell you how to swing it, let it tell you how to block, and let it tell you how to win, said Kashina as they continued to spar. Flashback and disappearing in a burst of static Naruto appeared in front of one of the stray devils and with a quick swing of his sword removed the devil's head, he disappeared again before appearing in front of another stray and stabbed him in the heart, he continued like this until he killed 10 of the strays in less than 5 seconds. Wow, Naruto-kun is so fast, said Tomo, what is this ability Sona-sama? asked Benia. I believe that we are seeing the ability called Sonido, Naruto said it was a high speed ability but I wasn't expecting it to him this fast. This ability will definitely nullify the decreased speed that rooks are supposed to have, said Sona. The stray devils were finally able to overcome the pressure they were under and went to attack Naruto. Naruto decided to fully test what his strength was like now and sheath his sword before charging back at the stray devils. The first stray came to was hit with an uppercut that actually caused his head to fly off his body and through the roof of the warehouse. Naruto then quickly moved to the side and kicked another stray so hard that he actually bisected the stray. Naruto was a killing machine as every kick and punch caused one of the strays to die. Look at that strength, I didn't think the rook piece would increase Naruto-kun's strength this much, said Tsubasa. It's not all rook strength, Naruto-kun is also using his chakra to further increase his strength, said Sona. A stray with large blades for arms ran at Naruto prepared to stab him while Naruto simply held up the palm of his hand, when the blade made contact with his skin it broke shocking the stray before he died due to Naruto shoving his fist through his chest. That was the defensive ability called Hiero, it gives him skin that is as hard as steel, that combined with the defense boost from his rook piece makes for a truly amazing defense, said Sona. Damn, training with Naruto-kun is going to be intense, said Tsubasa. Naruto continued to fight but now he was starting to get bored, his hands then started to spark with red energy, 
You know I was expecting much more from such a large group but you guys are really boring me so say goodbye, Bala, said Naruto as he threw a punch that launched the energy from his fist and tore through five strays. What you just saw is what I believe to be called a Bala. According to Naruto it is a very fast energy blast but it is not as strong as some of his other energy based attacks, said Sona. Rooks are normally hand to hand fighters, having one that can also use distance attacks will be a nice surprise for any future enemies or raiding game opponents, said Momo. Naruto soon noticed that there were only a few left while the largest stayed in the back and watched everything happening, Naruto figured that the big one was Zidonius but he couldn't really tell as it seemed to be using some kind of spell to hide its form. The large figure pointed a clawed finger at Naruto and the last five of the small fry moved in to attack. I've killed everyone that came before you by myself and you still believe you can beat me, you will pay dearly for your stupidity. Yelled Naruto before he held his right hand up to them and red ball of energy formed, be gone from my sight weaklings, Saro. Yelled Naruto as he fired a large beam of red energy that completely overtook the strays and left behind nothing but a large trench carved into the ground and ash. Holy fucking shit. Yelled Saji. That must have been the Sero Naruto was talking about, he was right as it's not as fast as the Bala but it is clearly a lot more powerful, said Sona though she too was shocked at the power of the attack even if it didn't show on her face. Well that's 39 down and 1 to go, I assume you're Zidonius, said Naruto as he started to walk towards the figure that was still hiding himself. That is correct, since you know who I am there is no need to continue hiding myself with this silly spell. Said Zidonius and with a swipe of his hand removed the spell. With the spell gone it revealed that Zidonius was 10 feet tall with a thick muscular body, skin as black as the night, four red slanted eyes, four arms that were bugling with large muscles, large hands with long claws, powerful legs with hooves for feet, large skeletal wings on his back, and he had no lips revealing razor sharp teeth. So you're the son of a bitch that raped and killed his king's daughter, oh I am going to enjoy this way more than I should, said Naruto with a feral grin. Is that what you're here about? you should grateful to me for doing that, we're supposed to be devils, creatures of sin that care for nothing but fulfilling our own desires no matter the cost, she was young, beautiful, and tight. I wanted her so I took her over and over again until she died from it, who knew a twelve year old could feel so good, said Zidonius with sick pleasure in his voice. Naruto disappeared in a burst of speed and appeared in front of Zidonius and delivered a right cross to his jaw. Zidonius went flying but Naruto appeared in front of Zidonius and gave him a fierce uppercut that sent Zidonius into the air. Naruto appeared above him once again and this time hard axe kick to the top of his head that rocketed Zidonius into the ground. When Naruto landed on the ground Zidonius shot out of the crater his body had made and tried to attack Naruto with his claws, unfortunately for him Naruto's hiero protected him from Zidonius claws while he blocked all of the stray's strikes. With a couple of well placed punches and kicks, Naruto broke all four of Zidonis' arms before palm thrusting him in the chest and sending him across the warehouse. Man, this fight was boring. I expected so much more from a group of 40, but you all were so weak. At least I get to enjoy destroying a piece of trash like you, said Naruto before he unsheathed his sword just enough to show the sharp edge, then he ran his right index finger along the edge, drawing a little blood. Pantera was one of the few objects that could easily cut through his hiero. Naruto then held his right hand towards Zidonius and charged another Sero, but this one was light blue with a red outline, be gone from this world Gran Rey Sero. Yelled Naruto as he fired a blast that was five times bigger than the original Sero he fired earlier, the blast completely destroyed Zidonius and the back half of the warehouse along with the land behind the warehouse. Holy fucking shit, yelled everyone, including Sona. He, he said that a Gran Rey Sero was a stronger form of a Sero. But hearing about it and seeing it is a completely different thing, said Sona. Well, that's done, said Naruto as he walked back to the others. Before anyone could say anything, a portal opened up above them and six fallen angels came out. What the hell? Why do I keep running into fallen angels? asked Naruto as he was getting really sick of fighting fallen angels. The fallen angels looked to Naruto and saw his tail swaying behind him. They figured he was the Yukai they were sent to kill and they all summoned light spears into their hands. Naruto and the others got ready for a fight but before anyone could move all six of them were suddenly killed by red, yellow, and pink light spears going through their heads and chests, well that was unexpected, said Naruto. At that point Rainer, Kalawarner, and Middlet came of the portal showing they were the killed the first six fallen, hey there Naruto-kun, said Rainer. Hey Ruto-kun, said Middlet, hey Naru-kun, said Kalawarner. Oh hey girls, I didn't think I'd see you again so soon, what are you doing here? asked Naruto. Well we were ordered to find you and kill you, but we decided not to as the bitch giving orders will most likely start another great war, 
We also decided to use this opportunity to disappear from her radar and give word back a Zazel Sama about what is going on so that maybe he can do something, said Rainer. I see. What do you think Sona Chan? asked Naruto. I think they need to tell me everything they know about what's going on, said Sona. She remembered that these were the three that had helped Naruto, but that didn't mean that she would so easily trust them. Very well, well, tell you everything we know, said Rainer. Underworld Venelana Gremory was a beautiful woman that looked to be in her mid twenties with soft and smooth fair skin. Bright violet eyes, brown hair that went down to her upper back. An amazing figure that most women would kill to have long legs, thick thighs, a narrow waist, a thick ass, a flat stomach, and large perky eye cup breasts. For clothes, she wore an elegant white dress with a black trim that revealed a great deal of her amazing cleavage, and black high heeled strappy heels. Venelana could usually be found with either a motherly smile on her face or a serious look but as of right now she was sitting in her bedroom with a deep frown on her face. The reason for the frown was that she was currently thinking about her family. Her eldest son Sir Zeches barely had time to have a proper talk with her due to his workload as Lucifer plus taking care of his own wife and child. Her daughter Rias had run away to the human world years ago and only really talked to her through letters or on the rare times she would visit for a short time. And the worst part was that her husband, Zeoticus, had greatly changed over the years. When they first met and long into their marriage Zeoticus was always so affectionate and kind. He would do anything to make his family happy, sure he had times where his silliness would get out of head and she would have to rein him in but she loved that about him. She didn't know when but at some point after Sir Zeches became Lucifer he changed. He became very serious and overly concerned with status and power. Both political and leertal power. When he agreed to the marriage contract between Rias and the youngest son of the House of Phoenix, she thought things would be fine since their own relationship started the same way, but when Rias started vigorously refused to marry Riser, she decided to take a look into how the boy acted, she was disgusted with what she saw and found out, the boy was nothing more but an arrogant man whore with no respect for anyone. Seeing that marrying Rias to Riser was a terrible idea she tried to talk to her husband about breaking the contract. He told her he wouldn't even consider the idea as doing so would cause damage to the Gremory name and status. Venelana didn't really understand this as the Gremory name was very high up on the social ladder so one broken marriage wouldn't do that much damage. She wasn't even sure the other houses would even really care. She talked to Lord and Lady Phoenix about breaking the contract and to her surprise they agreed that the marriage between Riser and Rias was a bad idea seeing just how much Rias hated Riser and Riser's attitude in general usually turned people off. Apparently they had tried to marry Riser off to someone before but no one was willing to allow their daughter to marry someone like Riser. Even some of the most power-hungry families had refused as they felt Riser's attitude and rudeness would cause them to drop in status, the problem thought was that Lord and Lady Phoenix explained that only the ones involved in the marriage contract could break it, while sure one of the Satans could break it they weren't really allowed to interfere in clan matters unless what they were doing posed a threat to the underworld as a whole. Knowing that Rias would agree to break the contract before she could even finish the question she went to talk to Riser and tried to convince him to break the contract. The little shit didn't pay attention to a word she said and was content to simply stare at her breasts while feeling up two of his pawns, she got up to leave seeing as she figured that talking to him was a lost cause but when Riser thought she was out of hearing range she heard him say that he hoped Rias' breasts would grow to be as large as hers, she really wanted to destroy him for that comment. Later she would ask her husband once again to break the contract because of how unhappy and was making Rias. He told that it was time that they stop babying Rias and she did her part for the clan and that a child with the power of destruction and phoenix regeneration would be a great boon for the clan. Venelana tried explaining that Rias becoming pregnant would not only take a long time not to mention she was too young to have a child and that there was no guarantee that the child would have both powers or either powers. Zeoticus became irritated with arguments and told her heatedly that Rias would just have to keep trying until she became pregnant with the perfect child, Venelana reminded him that devil women didn't become pregnant as fast as human women proof of this was how far apart Sir Zeches and Rias were in age, Zeoticus said nothing after that, he simply gave her a cold look before leaving. Since then Zeoticus had been very distant and cold to her. He spent most of his time with his harem to the point that he barely ever shared the bed with her anymore. He stopped using any kind of pet name for her and only referred to her by her first name, and he never even consulted her when he made decisions for the clan anymore, she had tried to talk to him many times before but he only ever gave her short answers or tried to end the conversation as fast as possible without even looking at her. I need to stop thinking about Zeoticus and focus on the matter at hand, Venelana said to herself before going to her nightstand and pulling out a few reports from her familiar about how Rias was doing, from what she was reading it seemed that Rias was getting really desperate to find a way to break the contract. 
Venelana really wished she could help her daughter in some way. Naruto is currently watching Kotase and Murayama practice their kendo with the rest of the kendo club. On the outside he appeared calm and collected but on the inside he was pissed. It had been a few days since Rainer, Middleton, and Kalawarner told them everything that was going on and Naruto had already gone with them to get the nun they were going to steal a scared gear from. Her name was Asia and Naruto almost instantly made it his job to protect her after seeing just how innocent she was. She quickly became like Naruto's little sister, he even got Sona to enroll her into the academy so that it would be easier to keep an eye on her. But what had him pissed was that as soon as he wasn't looking Rhea swooped and told Asia her little sob story and got Asia to agree to be reincarnated as Rhea's bishop with a promise of gaining more friends, Naruto had been so pissed about this that he was unable to compete in the little competition that Rhea's and Sona set up in order to see who got to go to the familiar forest, he did calm down some when he got Kaneko to promise to look out for Asia for him when she was with them. He was taken from his thoughts when someone shook his shoulder, looking up he saw that it was Murayama and Katase, come on Naruto-kun, practice is over, said Murayama, she and Katase had apparently changed while Naruto was in his thoughts, Naruto simply nodded before getting up and started walking them home, so Naruto-kun are you feeling better? asked Murayama, Naruto had told them everything that had happened with Asia and while they were surprised to find out that the two great ladies along with the rest of the occult research club were devils, they were also upset with Rias for what she had done and said to Naruto, yeah they had convinced him to tell them that too. I am still a bit ticked off but I am doing better than before, said Naruto. Wow Naruto-kun I am surprised you're so protective of Asia-chan, should we be expecting her to be your newest girlfriend? asked Katase. What no? If anything Asia is more of a little sister than anything, I can't explain it but just looking at her makes me want to protect her from everything, said Naruto. You know I like seeing this side of you Naruto-kun, it's nice knowing that Asia, Katase, and I have a big strong panther protecting us, said Murayama. Shut up. You're making it mushier than it needs to be, said Naruto. Oh don't get defensive Naruto-kun, you may act all big and bad but we know what you're like on the inside, said Katase. Oh and what is that? Asked Naruto, you're kind, protective, warm, and loving, face it Naruto-kun. While you're a fierce panther on the outside on the inside you're a cuddly kitty, said Katase with Murayama nodding in agreement. Naruto was about to say something before he suddenly froze when he sensed a familiar energy, you feel that Pantera? asked Naruto in thought. Yes I feel it, that girl is here and she's not that far away, said Pantera. You're ready for another fight Pantera? asked Naruto. I am always ready for a fight Naruto, let's go, said an excited Pantera. Are you okay Naruto-kun? asked Murayama, yeah I am fine, I just have something to take care of, said Naruto before walking in another direction, Katase and Murayama looked at each other before they quickly followed after him, it only took a couple of minutes before found the person he was looking for and she was staring right back at him, hey it's been a while hasn't, Tear, said Naruto with a smirk. Tear Haribel was a beautiful young woman an inch shorter than Naruto with olive skin. Aqua eyes, thick eyelashes, short messy blonde hair kept in three braided locks. A slender build, long legs, thick thighs, a juicy ass. A flat-toned stomach, and e-cup breasts, for clothes she wore flat heel black boots with a white trim, a long white skirt with slits at the sides that showed her thighs, and a long-sleeved white short jacket that only came to just under her breasts with a high collar that covered the lower half of her face and her nose with rebreathers on it and the sleeves ended in black glove-like fingers, Katase and Murayama were actually a bit jealous of Tear's looks and were wondering how Naruto knew her. Hello Naruto. I can see that you have gotten stronger and Tiburon even tells me that you've become a devil, said Tyr. Yeah I am a devil now, I can also see that you've grown stronger as well, I can't wait to test out your new strength, said Naruto with his smirk growing. I feel the same way, though I do hope you didn't think that becoming a devil will help you beat me, said Tyr. Oh that never crossed my mind, said Naruto, Naruto-kun what's going on and how do you know this woman? asked Katase. Girls this is Tyr Haribel and she has a scared gear similar to my own, we met a long time ago when I was just a kid, we've run into each other quite a few times over the years and every time we meet we have a fight to see who is stronger, Tyr these are my girlfriends Katase and Murayama, said Naruto. Hum, I am not surprised you've acquired more than one mate Naruto and your power will only attract more women to you, now I believe it's time for us test the power we've gained in our time apart, said Tyr. Sure thing, lead the way said Naruto, Tyr nodded before walking off with Naruto following her and Katase and Murayama following him, it took a couple of minutes before they arrived at an open field just outside of the Kuo, I believe this spot will work, said Tyr. Good, 
Girls please stand far away because things are about to get intense. Said Naruto with Murayama and Katase moving away from the two. Naruto and Tear both began to release their power on each other. Tear began to glow yellow while Naruto glowed blue. The problem is their sudden spike in power alerted anyone that was aware of the supernatural in the area and as a result two magic circles appeared. One with the Gremory crest in it and the other with the Sea Tree crest, from the Gremory magic circle came Rias and her whole peerage and from the Sea Tree magic circle came Sona and the rest of her peerage, Rias and her peerage were shocked to see that the power they felt was coming from Naruto and the, to them, unknown woman, on the other hand when Sona and her peerage had felt Naruto's power they thought he was in trouble and came quickly in order to help out. Naruto. What's going on? Asked Sona while eyeing the woman standing across from Naruto. Sona. What are you guys doing here? How did you even know where? Ah shit I forgot to put up a barrier didn't I? Asked Naruto. That appears to be the case Naruto, you can be so careless at times, said Tear with a shake of her head. Hey I didn't hear you trying to remind me about the barrier so don't try to pin all of this on me, said Naruto. Naruto. Please explain what is going on, said Sona. Naruto is this your king? Asked Tear. Yeah. Tear this is Sona city or my king. Sona this is the girl with a sacred gear similar to mine that I told you about. Her name is Tear Haribel, said Naruto. The mention of him and Tear having a sacred gear caught the attention of Rias and her peerage, mostly Rias. Damn it. Not only was he half Yukai but he also had a scared gear. He would have made an amazing addition to my peerage, but maybe I have a chance at reincarnating this Tear woman, Rias thought to herself. I see. Well in that case it's nice to meet you Haribel san said Sona. And you as well, I must say I am impressed that you've got a Naruto of all people to follow you so willingly, it speaks very highly of his opinion of you as he is not the type to follow just anyone, said Tear. Thank you. Naruto is very dear to me, said Sona catching everyone's attention though she ignored this, I hope you don't mind me asking Haribel san but what are you? asked Sona. So you were able to feel it, very well I don't mind telling you. I am a half breed like Naruto, but while he was half human and half yukai, I am half human and half demon, said Tear, surprising almost everyone. Um, why is everyone acting so surprised? I mean, we're all demons, right? asked Issei while staring at Tear's breasts and every other pair of large breasts. Naruto scowled at this and wanted to punch him in the face, but he held himself back as he knew acting a member of another devil's peerage would get himself and Sona in a lot of trouble. He didn't care if he got in trouble but he refused to put Sona through whatever punishment that would come from his actions. I see you haven't encouraged your new pawn to study the underworld Rias, said Sona with disappointment and irritation in her voice. I haven't had the time for that Sona, I have something very important coming up, said Rias. Very well I shall explain for Hyodo san then, you see Hyodo san there are many beings that live in the underworld but there are three groups you really need to know about. The first of course are devils like us that live in the upper circles of the underworld and have the rankings of low class, middle class, high class, and ultimate class, all devils are intelligent and most of us are powerful, the next group are the demons, they live in the middle circles of the underworld and have the rankings of demon, demon lord, and archdemon. There is only ever one archdemon at any given time. Demons are mostly mindless beasts with only a few having intelligence. They are very powerful however, the last group are the fiends, they live in the lowest circles of the underworld and are the worst of the worst, they have the rankings of fiend, greater fiend, and archfiend and just like archdemons there is only ever one archfiend at any given time, with the fiends only the greater fiends have intelligence but all fiends only want to destroy all within their sight and they have the power to do it, said Sona. Yeah thanks for the lesson Sona sensei but that doesn't explain why you all were so shocked by tear being half demon, said Issei. Don't talk to Sona like that you moron. Everyone was surprised because demons don't usually deal with humans let alone have children with them so demon half-breeds are fairly rare, said Naruto with a sneer for Issei's disrespect at Sona. Very Ture Naruto, I am actually even rarer than that since my mother was a demon lord and they usually find humans beneath them and unworthy of their time, also don't use my first name Hyodo san I don't know you well enough for that, said Tyr. A demon lord, but they're as strong as the satans and archangels. That means that this woman has the potential to be just as strong if not stronger, thought a surprised Rias. Naruto I know you weren't expecting all this but can you please put the seal up now, I have other things to do, said Tear. Yeah, yeah, I am on it, said Naruto as his right hand began to glow with his chakra then with a few quick movements of his hand he drew a seal on the ground, the seal glowed for a few moments before a large dome of chakra formed and covered everyone in the area, there we should be fine now, so any rules for this fight? asked Naruto. We only use the power given to us by our sacred gears, said Tear. Fine with me, 
said Naruto before summoned Pantera to his side and unsheathed her. Tyr summoned her sacred gear as well, her sacred gear also took the form of a sword which was sheathed horizontally on her upper back. The sword didn't seem particularly long but it was unusually wide, the guard was just as wide with three holes on each side, the handle was purple, and the sword was longer than the sheath, using one of the holes on the guard Tyr unsheathed her sword revealing that the sword was completely hollow in the middle essentially consisting of nothing more than the edges of what would otherwise be a normal sword, this is Tyr's sacred gear, Imperial Tiburon. The two stared each other down for a moment before they both disappeared using Sonido and appeared in front of each other with their swords locked. They broke apart and started slashing at each other with great speed. Sparks flew everywhere while Tyr stared at Naruto with a stoic look on her face while Naruto had a large feral grin on his face. Tyr then surprised him by parrying one of his attacks and then giving him a strong kick to the stomach that caused him to slide back. Now that there was some distance between them Tyr pulled her sword back as yellow spirit energy gathered within the hollow of her sword, she then thrusted her sword forward and launched a projectile energy blade at Naruto, Ola Azul, said Tyr as she launched her attack. The attack was a direct hit causing a small cloud of smoke, when it cleared it showed that Naruto had managed to block most of the damage but the top half of this clothes were blown away. Every girl blushed at seeing Naruto's well-built body, Murayama and Katase had perverted smiles on their faces, damn it Tyr. I have to pay for a new uniform now, said Naruto before charging at Tyr, they clashed once again but during the fight Naruto used Sonido to appear behind Tyr, Bala. Said Naruto as he fired the attack at Tyr's back, the attack hit and sent Tyr flying forward only for Naruto to appear in front of her and kick her into the air, appearing above her he axe kicked her back to the ground while charging up another attack, Sero, said Naruto as he fired the red energy blast at the downed Tyr. The Sero exploded upon contact with Tyr, Knowing that something like that wouldn't keep Tyr down Naruto used his spirit energy to stand on the air and waited for the smoke to clear, damn it Naruto, do you have any idea how much it costs me to have these jackets specially made, said Tyr from within the smoke. Well now you know how I feel about having to buy another one of these expensive ass uniforms, said Naruto with a smirk. The smoke started to clear and Issei was drooling in anticipation at seeing Tyr topless and seeing her large breasts. His happiness grew as the smoke cleared more and he saw Underboob with the right breast having a gothic number 3 tattooed on it. But his happiness died when he saw that her nipples and the rest of her breasts were covered by some kind of bone plating, he then became horrified when he saw that the bone plating continued up her neck and covered the lower half of her face in some kind of scary shark-like mask. Everyone except for Naruto was surprised by Tyr's appearance, Naruto had seen her like this plenty of time before though he did narrow his eyes at the tattoo on her right breast. I see. So Tyr you've taken your mother's title and become the new shark empress, said Naruto, he remembered his father having a gothic number 6 tattooed on his lower back and how he said that he would get a tattoo whenever he became the new panther king. That right Naruto, you're looking at the third shark empress, said Tyr with a bit of pride in her voice, Tyr had greatly admired her mother's strength and power growing up and more than anything she wanted to live up to and surpass the standards her mother had set. Well then it seems I have a bit of catching up to do, I can't have you getting too far ahead of me said Naruto before both of them charged at each other yet again. On the sidelines Murayama and Katase were watching the battle closely as they were amazed by Naruto's sword skills, they were a bit ticked off that he hadn't showed them this before as he could have been helping them with the kendo club, but they decided they would talk to him about that later. Your mate is quite strong, said a voice in Murayama's head, this had the effect of spooking her and causing her to quickly look around for the voice, calm yourself mistress, I mean you no harm, if you wish to speak to me simply think what you want to say and I will hear it, said the voice. Calming down some Murayama decided to ask the voice a question, who are you? asked Murayama. I am your sacred gear, said the voice, sacred gear, you mean like what Naruto-kun and Haribel-san have? asked Murayama. Yes I am very similar to the ones they have though I am also very different and will grant you different abilities, though that will be for another time as I am not even fully awake within you yet, said the voice. If you're not fully awake then how are you speaking to me right now? asked Murayama. The power that was released by your mate and your potential harem sister earlier had awoken me just enough to allow me to talk to you, I am purposely forcing myself to not fully awaken as you are currently not strong enough to handle my power and would be driven mad or be destroyed by it, said the voice. Murayama paled at what the voice said and was extremely glad that it forcing itself to stay half asleep, I guess I should ask Naruto-kun to help train me so that you don't have to remain half asleep, said Murayama. I would recommend doing that said the voice, by the way can I at least know your name? asked Murayama. Of course, my name is Hyrinmaru, said the now named Hyrinmaru. 
Well hi Rinmaru I look forward to working with you when I am stronger, said Murayama. What Murayama didn't know was that Katase was having a similar conversation with her own sacred gear by the name of Senban Sakura. Kaneko are you sensing anything from this? Asked Rias as she continued to watch Naruto and Tear fight. Yes but it's different from last time, said Kaneko. How so? Asked Rias. Last time he was using chakra. Chakra is made up of a mixture of both physical energy and spiritual energy. Now he's only using spiritual energy which is very difficult for Yukai to do since we are naturally born to mix the two energies and use chakra, said Kaneko. If it is as difficult as you say then how can Naruto do it? Asked Rias but she only got a shrug as an answer from the small girl. Maybe it has something to do with his sacred gear, Haribel San did say that the rule was that they could only use the power given to them by their sacred gears, said Akano. Hum, good point Akano. What's your evaluation on everything so far as their sword skills go Kiba? Asked Rias. It's clear that they're masters of the sword, there is no hesitation in their strikes but I can't tell if it because they know each other well enough to know what the other can handle of if they're really trying to kill each other. I am also surprised that they can move so fast, is Naruto perhaps a knight like me? Asked Kiba. No, Benia and Tomo are my knights, Naruto is my mutated rook, answered Sona as she had overheard their conversation. If he's your rook then how is he moving so fast, even with training in order to overcome the lower speed that comes with being a rook he should nt be as fast as he is now so how? Asked Rias. Sorry Rias but it's not my place to tell you, said Sona. Before Rias could say anything there was a loud explosion and then the sound of fighting stopped. Everyone quickly looked to the battle and saw a battered and bloody tear standing over an equally beat up Naruto with her sword at his throat, Sona, her peerage, Katais, Murayama, and Kaneko were worried for Naruto, Rias, Kiba, and Akano were looking at Tear with a critical eyes, Issei couldn't wipe the smile off his face at finally seeing someone kick Naruto's ass, and poor Asia was scared out of her mind for her big brother's health. Looks like this round belongs to me Naruto, said Tear while not taking her sword from his throat, she had learned from previous fights that Naruto was not down until he admitted to defeat, something that was very rare for him to do. He he he. Yeah you got me this time, so what's the score now? Asked Naruto as Tear took Tiburon from his throat and he got up. The score is 26 wins for you and 26 wins for me now, our next fight will be the tiebreaker, said Tear. I see. Well hopefully we won't have to hold back at all in that fight, said Naruto. Yes, while our battles up to now have been fun it's time for us to settle down, our next battle will be our last, well have this battle when we've both achieved our balance breakers and you have your rightful title as Panther King, said Tear. Right. I look forward to our fight but you should know that it won't be our last, said Naruto with a smirk. He he he. You're probably right about that, fighting you pushes me to be better and if I wish to surpass my mother I need to be stronger, said Tear. You'll get there Tear, you're too strong not too, said Naruto before really looking at her injuries, Asia come here please, called out Naruto. Asia ran over to Naruto as fast as she could and looked at him with big innocent and scared eyes, Naruto was glad that even after becoming a devil Asia didn't lose her innocence. Thank Amaterasu for small miracles, Naruto thought to himself. Are you okay big brother, you need healing don't you? Asked Asia. Well yeah I do but I want you to heal Tear, said Naruto. Are you sure big brother? Asked Asia. Yeah go on ahead and do your thing, said Naruto. Asia nodded nervously before moving over to Tear and started to heal her, all the while she kept glancing back at her big brother. Don't worry so much Asia, ill heal Naruto, you just focus on Haribel San said Sona as she started to heal Naruto the same way she did when she fist reincarnated him, it only took a few minutes before Naruto and Tear were healed and Naruto had taken down the barrier around them, Tear thanked Asia for healing her and then opened a garganta and was about to leave, before you leave Haribel san I have a question, what exactly did you mean when you said it would be time for you and Naruto to settle down? asked Sona. Naruto and I have been fighting each other ever since we were 5 years old, we've been at this little courtship ritual of ours for 11 years now, as the third shark empress and the future seventh panther king we can't keep playing childish games, therefore when we have our next battle we will marry once one of us wins, said Tear. Courtship ritual. Asked Naruto in confusion, Mary, yelled Sona, her peerage, Katase, Murayama, and Kaneko. Yes we will marry, demons and even demon half-breeds only marry those that have proven themselves to us through battle. The eleven years of battling between Naruto and myself was basically him trying to gain my hand in marriage by proving himself a strong mate, I am proud to say that he has more than proven himself to be worthy of me so regardless of the outcome of our finally battle we will marry, 
The final battle is really just to see who will be the dominant one in the relationship, said Tyr. And you didn't think to tell me about this because? asked Naruto. I thought you would reject the idea, said Tyr, when I was younger say maybe 11 or 12 I would have, but I've come to really like you Tyr and was actually planning to ask you out, in other words I am fine with this but we don't have to get married right away do we? I mean I am still in school? asked Naruto. When we actually get married depends on the dominant one in our relationship, so if I win well be married right away, if you win well marry whenever you like, said Tyr. Naruto nodded to this move to leave again but was once again stopped from doing so only this time it was by Rias. Before you leave Haribel san I'd like to make you an offer, said Rias, Naruto already didn't like where this was going. I am listening, said Tyr, I would like to offer you a spot in my peerage, said Rias, Naruto was almost ready to punch Rias in the face, she already had his little sister and now she wanted his new fiancé as well. Hum, what is your name? asked Tyr, Rias Gremory, said Rias. Gremory, I've heard about your house and its kindness to its servants, I can assume that if I was to accept your offer I would be treated well, but I am afraid that I must decline had you asked me earlier than this I might have accepted, said Tyr. Can you explain why I am too late? asked Rias, I am the third shark empress, it would be disgraceful for me to serve anyone other than my mate, said Tyr before finally she disappeared into the garganta. So, I am very dear to you huh? asked Naruto with a smirk. Um, yes you are dear to me said Sona as she looked away from him with a blush on her face, Naruto just continued to smirk at her before Kateis walked up and slapped him upside his head. Ow! What did you do that for? asked Naruto, don't just sit there smirking, tell her you like her too, said Kateis, Naruto was about to retort but stopped when he saw Kateis glaring at him, clicking his teeth Naruto walked over to Sona and kissed her on the cheek, this surprised everyone while Kateis and Murayama just smirked. I am going to the student council office to finish some paperwork, said Naruto before opening his own garganta and walking through it, Kateis and Murayama walked off while everyone else still stood there in shock, Sona had a bright blush on her face but she also had a small smile on her face. Soon everyone started to leave through magic circles but Sona stopped Rias before she could leave, Rias, Naruto may think I notice his actions but I do, I notice that every time you are brought up he becomes irritated and angry, I've asked him if anything was wrong and he has refused to tell but I am sure it has something to do with you, I know Naruto isn't one to upset with someone for no reason so tell me Rias, what did you do? Asked Sona. Rias sighed at this but relented and told Sona what she had said to Naruto. Needless to say Sona was shocked her friend would say something like that to anyone. Rias that was a very cruel and foolish of you to do, said Sona. I know Sona and to be honest I don't know why I said those things to him or why I was willing to just let him die, but none of that matters now as everything turned out fine for him, said Rias. It matters to him Rias. Naruto is a very prideful man and he can hold a grudge, he is not someone you want as a future enemy, I told you I've seen his actions but I've seen your actions as well Rias and I don't like that you're trying to manipulate a member of my peerage, said Sona. We're devil Sona, manipulating people comes easy to us and I need all the help I can get with my problem, said Rias. I understand that you're in a terrible situation right now Rias but this isn't the way to fix it, you're not acting like yourself, said Sona. That's easy for you to say you managed to get out of your situation, yelled Rias. I know that Rias and I really wish I could help you with yours, said Sona. You can, just temporarily trade Naruto to me, said Rias. I can't do that Rias, not only would I hurt Naruto by trading him away but there is a strong possibility of him becoming a stray just so he gets away from you, said Sona. Whatever, said Rias before she left, Sona sighed at this before she too left. Later that night Naruto walked into his two-bedroom apartment with a sigh as he had finished all of his paperwork, taking off his shoes and moving toward the living room Naruto saw Asia on the couch in her pajamas sleeping, she had come to live with him after he kept her from being killed for her sacred gear. She must have stayed up waiting for me to come home. Naruto thought to himself, walking over to her Naruto picked her up bridal style and carried her to the second bedroom and tucked her in. He was glad she was already in her pajamas, going to his own bedroom Naruto found Middleton. Rainer, and Kalawarner sleeping in his bed, they too had come to live with him after they had gotten Asia. He didn't mind them sleeping in his bed as he actually liked that he usually woke up with either Kalawarner's or Rainare's breasts in his face. Though he was planning on getting a bigger place, walking over to his nightstand he reached in and pulled out an old leatherback notebook with his mother's name on it, this was her notebook that she kept all of her notes for her techniques in, taking it to the living room Naruto sat on the couch and started going through some of his mother's notes, he wanted to make his mother proud so he was going to master every technique in the notebook. 
A few minutes later his attention is taken from the notebook when he felt two large soft mounds push into the back of his head. Looking up he saw a Rainer standing over her with a small smile on her face. She walked around so that she was standing in front of and Naruto saw that she was completely naked. Her voluptuous body shined in the moonlight that came through his window showing off her hard soft pink nipples and her puffy pussy that had a neatly trimmed patch of black pubic hair above it. Rainer was only one of the three fallen angels that slept naked, hell she walked around the apartment naked and poor Asia had fainted out of pure embarrassment when she came home one day and found Rainer sitting on the couch naked, Naruto didn't mind Rainare's nudist habits but he did ask that she at least put on some clothes when she knew Asia would be around. Rainer then straddled his lap, wrapped her arms around his neck, and lightly kissed him on the lips, this was something that happens a lot with Rainer, Middelt, and Kalawarner as they were very straightforward in what they wanted to do with him, Middelt had just started to wake him up in the morning with a blowjob, Kalawarner would join him in the shower every now and again, and Rainer would straddle him at random times and they would make out, Naruto hadn't had sex with any of them yet but they made it clear that they wanted it. Is there something I can do for you Rainer? Asked Naruto after they broke from the kiss. You can stop being a cut tease and fuck me, said Rainer with seductive look on her face. That's a very tempting idea, said Naruto as he ran his hand up and down her sides before groping her ass. Ooh, then fuck me already, you know you're the only person I know that can have three beautiful women in his bed but instead of ravishing them you sit on the couch and read, said Rainer. I like to keep people guessing, said Naruto before he laid her down and they started making out, Rainer moaned loudly as Naruto moved his hands from her ass and started playing with her breasts, this continued for about half an hour before they broke apart. We felt your power surge earlier today, is everything okay? Asked Rainer. Hearing this Naruto told her about everything that had happened and once he was done she couldn't help but laugh at him, things like this could only happen to you he 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 he, so now that you know how Sona feels about you, how do the others feel and how are things going to go for you and Sona? Asked Rainer. I've always known that the rest of the girls in the peerage like me as they're not as good at hiding it like Sona is, I am going to wait for them to say something before I do anything, as for how things are going to go with Sona, they'll go slow as that's just the kind of girl Sona is, going fast with a girl like Sona will only scare her off, said Naruto. Rainer nodded at this and was about to start their makeout session again but instead she found herself in Naruto's arms as he carried her to the bedroom, she pouted at this as she knew this meant they weren't going to have sex, Naruto was the only man she knew that would carry a girl to his bedroom and not fuck her, your mean Naruto-kun, why won't you fuck me? Asked Rainer. It's not like I don't want to Ray chan you're a very sexy and beautiful woman and I would love to hear you screaming my name but there is just a lot going on right now, said Naruto. Two weeks later Sona, Tsubaki, and Naruto were walking towards the occult research club in order to partake in a meeting that was supposed to be going on. Over the two weeks Naruto has increased the intensity of his personal training and has also been training with his fellow peerage members. Tsubaki, Momo, and Reya have been helping him practice his magic and learn spells. He's been refining his sword skills with Benia and Tomo while also helping them further their own skills, he's spared with Tsubasa, Ruruko, and Saji, and Sona has been helping him study devil law, traditions, and many other things, he's also been training with Rainer, Kalawarner, and Middelt in order to increase his hiero's resistance to light magic, he was surprised though when Kates and Marayama asked him for training and told him that they had sacred gears similar to his own as well. He asked Sona if this would be okay and she encouraged him to train them as it would keep them from losing control when their sacred gears were fully awoken. Other than training Naruto had also been doing quite a number of contracts. Mostly from women clients, some of them just wanted someone to talk to. Some of the single moms wanted him to babysit, a lot of them wanted a date to make their ex-boyfriends jealous. And even more of them wanted him to pamper them, his personal life has been going great as Kates and Marayama were happy. He had actually taken the three fallen angel girls out on separate dates in order to get to know them better. He's spent time with Kaneko and Asia, and he has even taken Sona out on three dates, word had already spread around school that they were dating so now it was public knowledge that he had three girlfriends, something that the boys hated since he had three girls and the girls were jealous that they weren't one of his girls so they tried harder to get his attention, he and Sona never did much in public other than a quick kiss on either the cheek or lips, hold hands, and a quick hug. Why are we going to see Rias again? Asked Naruto with irritation clear in his voice, Sona had talked to him about his feelings towards Rias and while she understood why he felt the way he did she asked him to at least behave himself, he promised he tried but if she did something to piss him off then he might just have to leave to get some air. Rias has reminded me that as co-governor of this territory any meetings that take place here with a foreign party is just as much my concern as it is hers, 
Therefore despite my personal feelings of not wanting to be a part of this meeting I am duty bound to participate, said Sona as she adjusted her glasses. And Tsubaki and I have to come because why, I have paperwork to do? Asked Naruto. As Sona Sama's queen I go everywhere with her, you are here more for protection, said Tsubaki. Protection? Asked Naruto. The person we are going to have this meeting with is an arrogant pig and I fully expect him to be insulting, said Sona. You can't honestly expect me to be able to behave myself with a guy like that right? Asked Naruto. No, but I do expect him to purposely do something to antagonize you and I fully expect you to retaliate, said Sona. He he he, that I can do, said Naruto with a smirk. Soon they arrived at the club room and walked in, inside Naruto saw everyone he was expecting to see but there was someone new. She was a beautiful woman with fair skin, silver eyes, long silver hair that featured a long braid on each side with small blue bows at the ends while the rest is let down ending in twin braids, she had a voluptuous body, long legs, thick thighs, wide hips, a juicy ass, and e-cup breasts, for clothes she wore a blue and white French maid uniform with a matching headpiece, this woman is Grafia Lucifuge, head maid of the house of Gremory and queen to the current Lucifer, Sears X Lucifer. Ah Sona, I am glad you could make it said Rias, good evening Sona-sama, please have a seat, said the ever-stoic Grafia. Good evening to you as well Grafia-san, and of course I made it Rias it is my duty after all, said Sona as she took a seat on the couch with Tsubaki and Naruto standing behind her. I see you've gotten a new piece Sona-sama, said Graifa, due to Rias and Sona being friends Grafia knew Sona's peerage just as well as she knew Rias' peerage, though she was becoming increasingly annoyed by Rias' new pawn as he kept staring at her breasts and ass. Yes I have. This is my mutated rook Naruto Jaegerjakes, said Sona. Grafia's eyes widened in shock at his last name before she calmed down and addressed him, Excuse me Jaegerjakes san but do you happen to have any relation to Grimjao Jaegerjakes? asked Grafia. Yes, he's my dad, said Naruto, I see, in that case after all of this I will be needing to speak to you and Sona Sama, the leader of the Yukai faction has been looking for you, said Grafia surprising the hell out of Rias and Sona. Ya Chan has been looking for me. Hum I wonder what she could need from me, Naruto said more to himself than anyone else. Naruto you know the leader of the Yukai faction? Asked a surprised Sona. Yeah, she and my mom were really close friends, I spent a good deal of time with her which is probably why I am one of the few people she lets call her Ya-chan, said Naruto. Before anyone could say anything a magic circle appeared in the room and out of it came fire followed by a man, the man had fair skin, blonde hair, blue eyes, and an athletic build, for clothes he wore brown shoes, red slacks, a white dress shirt, and a red blazer. This man is Riser Phoenix, ah the human world, it's been a while since Riser was last here, said Riser. Time passed and Naruto learned that this pompous asshole named Riser was Rias' fiance due to a contract. Naruto smirked at Issei's depressed form when he learned this, Naruto was then forced to listen to Riser and Rias argue back and forth about how Rias didn't want to marry him. Naruto actually found himself conflicted here as while he didn't like Rias right now, he also didn't like the idea of being forced to marry someone, he was brought out of his conflicted thoughts when he heard Issei yelling at Riser about leaving Rias alone and they Rias telling Riser that Issei wanted to be a harem king. Riser then summoned his peerage and taunted Issei with it by kissing and groping his queen in front of him. Naruto was disgusted by this but he noticed some things. The first thing he noticed was that Riser's queen didn't seem to be enjoying what he was doing to her but she went along with it anyway and the other thing he noticed was the two Nekomata in Riser's peerage and they seemed to have noticed him as well. Naruto openly laughed though when he saw Issei try to attack Riser only to get a beat down from the mons pawn by the name of Mira. Naruto's laugh finally got Riser to pay attention to Sona, Tsubaki, and Naruto. Oh Sona and what seems to be some of her peerage are here as well. You can go now this doesn't concern you, said Riser. Sorry but I will be staying, this is my territory just as much as it is Rias so what goes on here concerns me as well, said Sona. Whatever just sit there and only speak when you're spoken to, said Riser. Excuse me Phoenix, but you will not speak to my king with such disrespect, said Naruto with sneer. And just who the hell are you? asked Riser, Naruto Yeagerjakes, Sona Sama's mutated rook, said Naruto. Ah another low class scum. Just sit down and let your betters talk about things you wouldn't understand weakling, said Riser. Everything went deadly quiet after that as Naruto stood there with his hair shadowing his eyes, Sona, Tsubaki, and Kaneko knew that Riser had fucked up as they could tell that Naruto was pissed. Rias was hoping something like this would happen as Naruto would see just how much of an asshole Riser was and agree to help her, 
Grafia eyed Naruto with caution as she could feel the power building up inside of him. Low class scum, my betters, and a fucking weakling, you dare to say all of this to me, ill fucking grind you to dust, yelled Naruto before using Sonido to appear in front of Riser and delivered a powerful right hook to the jaw that sent Riser flying across the room until he was embedded into the wall. He was about to move in order to press the attack, but then Mira appeared between him and Riser. Mira was cute girl with fair skin, brown eyes, blue hair styled in four ponytails with two pointed up and two pointed down. A slender build, toned legs, a firm ass, and B cup breasts. For clothes, she wore a white howry with a red obi under a red happy coat. Bandages on her forearms and shins, black guards on her hands. And on her feet is a pair of Zori, in her, her hands is her weapon of choice. A wooden staff, moving quickly she swung her staff at Naruto but much to her horror when her staff met Naruto's body it shattered, as she looked at her broken weapon Naruto delivered a vicious palm thrust to her chest and sent her flying, right out the window, with her out of the way he turned his attention back to Riser only to find the rest of the Mons peerage between him and his prey, Naruto growled at them and was about to move them out of his way as well but was stopped by Sona. That's enough Naruto, please control yourself, said Sona. Naruto stopped in his tracks and took several deep breaths before he walked back to Sona and stood behind her, you should learn to control that filthy animal of yours Sona, said Riser as he finally pulled himself out of the wall while rubbing his jaw, while his healing factor has already fixed the damage the attack had caused but for some reason he could still feel the pain. And you should watch who you insult, next time we'll do nothing and happily watch Naruto tear you to shreds, said Sona with narrowed eyes, Naruto smirked as he liked this aggressive side of Sona. The meeting continued once Riser had someone get Mira was unconscious. In the end it was decided that Rias and Riser would have a ratting game in order to decide if Rias would marry Riser. Riser gave Rias 10 days to train her peerage in order to be ready for the ratting game before he and his peerage left. Naruto noticed that some of Riser's peerage gave him some lingering looks before they left. Grafia bowed to Rias and Sona before she too left in order to inform her master as to how things went, though she did say that she'd be back to talk to Naruto and Sona. So Naruto after meeting my fiancé do you see why I need your help? asked Rias. Yeah, said Naruto, so will you help me now? asked Rias. No, said Naruto with sneer, Rias narrowed her eyes at this as she played her final card, I see well then I hope you know that if I lose this ratting game then not only do I have to marry that pig but he also gains control over my peerage, this means that he can do as he pleases with not only me but Akano, Kiba, Issei, Kaneko, and Asia, said Rias. Naruto growled loudly at this and started to pace the room, Sona and Tsubaki didn't like that Rias was manipulating Naruto like this but they couldn't say anything because everything that Rias said was true, Naruto, I am not going to force you to do anything but Rias is telling you the truth, said Sona. Hearing this Naruto stopped pacing and punch a hole in the wall next to him, it'll help you train, by sensing Akino's power I can tell that she mainly fights with magic so if she needs it it'll be the target for her spells. I can tell just by looking at Kiba that he's good with a sword so it'll help him refine his fighting style, it'll train Kaneko in whatever she wants, Asia isn't a fighter so you'll need to teach her some barrier spells and how to dodge, and Issei can go fuck himself, said Naruto. I see, thank you for doing this for me, said Rias with a smile at finally getting her way, her smile disappeared when she was forced to her knees by Naruto releasing his power on her. Naruto looked at her with a feral sneer on his face before speaking, don't get it fucking twisted Gremory. The only reason I am doing this shit is so I know I did my best to keep that bastard away from Kaneko and Asia, if they weren't in your peerage I wouldn't be helping you at all. Said Naruto before his eyes quickly cut to Sona before looking back at Rias, and I guess the fact that Sona would be sad if something happens to you factors into this as well, in my honest opinion you and Riser deserve each other, you're both manipulative assholes that look down on others just because you think they're weak, said Naruto before storming out of the room. Tsubaki go after Naruto and make sure he calms down without destroying anything, said Sona. Yes Sona-sama, said Tsubaki before she quickly running after Naruto. Jeez, what the hell is his problem, why is he always such an asshole, said Issei. Be silent Hyodo-san, I will not have you speaking ill of Naruto for simply speaking the truth, said Sona with a dangerous edge to her voice. What are you talking about Sona, I am nothing like Riser, said Rias as she slowly got up from the ground. Don't be so sure about that Rias, I mean just look at how you've been acting lately. You allowed Hyodo san to die just so you could reincarnate him, you left Naruto to die after the terrible things you said to him, you've used his friendship with Tiju san in order to get information out of him, and you just used the fact that he deeply cares for Tiju san and Argento san to manipulate him into helping you, you haven't been acting like the Rias that I have called a good friend for years, 
You're acting like a female version of Riser, said Sona before she turned and left. She's right. I don't like the Rius I've been seeing lately and I want the old Rius back, come on Asia I'll take you home, said Kaneko as she walked towards the door with Asia quietly following her. Naruto was currently standing in an open field at the Gremory vacation home in the mountains. He was waiting for Rius and her peerage to show up for training while thinking about what happened before he came here. First Tsubaki had managed to calm him down by resting his head on her breasts and rubbing his head. Next he had that talk with Grafia but apparently she didn't actually know what Yusaka wanted but she needed him to come to her palace in about three weeks. And then after that he went to tell Kates and Murayama what he would be doing for the next ten days, he wrote up a training schedule for them and asked Sona and the rest of the peerage to train the girls until he was free to do it himself, they agree to this and wish him luck in training Rias and her peerage, Sona even surprised them by openly kissing him deeply on the lips, the other girls felt a bit jealous about this so Naruto found himself getting kissed by all of the girls. Naruto came out of his thoughts when he saw Rias and her peerage come into the field, he smirked when he saw that they made Issei carry everything, upon seeing him Asia quickly ran over and hugged him tight, Kaneko walked over as well and Naruto patted her on the head causing her to lightly purr for him. Hey girls, you ready for this? asked Naruto, ready, said Kaneko. I am kind of nervous and scared, said Asia, don't be Asia Chan. I promise that everything will be fine, now you two should go unpack and then get ready for training said Naruto, they nodded at this before going back over to Rias and the others in order to help put everything away. Later once everyone was ready they were lined up in front of Naruto, who was just looking at them, they actually found his stare rather intimidating, we have 10 days to train that's 2 days for each of you, I will not be pulling my punches with most of you, if you wish to quit my training at any time simply say so and we will be done as I don't need anyone wasting my time, said Naruto. Um Naruto-san. I think your math might be off because if it's 2 days per person then we would need 12 days since there are 6 of us, said Kiba. I already said that Issei can go fuck himself, hell have to make do with whatever Rias has planned for him, said Naruto. You actually have 2 extra days Naruto-san, while I am thankful for your help I am afraid that I won't be needing your training as I already have my training planned out, said Rias. Very well, anyone want those days? asked Naruto, Kaneko quickly raised her hand. This way she could have four days of personal training rather than just two. Very well Ko Chan those two days are now yours. Now then it's day one and Akano san you are up so come with me, said Naruto as he started walking away with Akano following. I should have gone first, said Kaneko, now, now Kaneko Chan you'll have your turn but for now I need you to help Issei with his combat training, said Rias. Fine, said Kaneko, with Naruto and Akeno Naruto and Akano found themselves in an open field standing far apart from each other. All right Akano I am going to attack you and your task is to stop me, it's as simple as that, said Naruto. Very well, I am ready when you are Naruto-san, said Akano. Good, now start, said Naruto as he started speed walking towards her. Sure he could use Sonido but he knew she couldn't handle that type of speed. Akano fired a lightning spell at Naruto but he easily knocked it away with the back of his hand. She charged up another shot and fired it but just like before Naruto easily knocked it away. Akano tried to charge up a third shot but instead she was met with a fist to the stomach that launched her back 10 feet as she rolled across the ground. The rate of fire for your spells is too slow, they're too weak. And you kept using the same spell, you need to put everything you have into every spell you fire. They need to be faster, and if one doesn't work you need to use another. Now come on, we're going to keep doing this until you either land a clean hit or I see clear improvement, said Naruto. Akano simply nodded at this with a blush on her cheeks her masochist side acting up from Naruto's blow, they continued like this for about 3 hours without a break before Naruto finally noticed that Akino's attacks were getting faster but they weren't as strong and it was still the same lightning spell, it was then that Naruto thought of something. Akino san you're really into S&M right? asked Naruto as he remembered how Kaneko described Akino, not to mention he could smell her juices. Yes Naruto sama, I love S&M, said Akino while panting in a huge deep red blush covering her face while her body was shivering, she had lost count of how many times she had climaxed from Naruto's blows, it was why she called him Sama since right now he was the S, sadist, to her M, masochists. I see, well I can tell that you really enjoy using lightning but you really need to think on using different spells. If you must think of it like this, every spell gives you a different way to inflict pain onto your enemy, it's fine to have a favorite element that you like to use but you need variety in case you come across someone that is immune to your favorite element, I am giving you an hour break, Think about what I've said while you recover and when the hour is up well get back to training, said Naruto as he walked off. 
Yes Naruto-sama, said Akano, after an hour Naruto and Akano started training again. Naruto was happy to see that this time she did indeed use different spells to attack him but they weren't that powerful and she didn't manage to land a clean hit on him. As they continued her spells increased in power little by little so now her attacks were faster than before and also a little stronger. That being said she still wasn't able to hit him and he could sense more power inside of her that she seemed to be refusing to use, he knew of her being a fallen angel hybrid since getting information on the people in Rios peerage was easy, especially when his king was Rios childhood friend. He didn't know the full story though, he only knew that for some reason she refused to use any of the power she got from her fallen angel side and to him this was foolish. Soon it was pretty late and Akano was laying on the ground. Her body covered in scratches, bruises, and her core was soaking wet with her juices. She had completely lost track of how many times she had orgasmed during her training. It didn't help that Naruto gave off an aura of domination during the whole thing that turned her on even more. You've improved Akano san but it's not enough while the girls in Riser's peerage don't look like they were properly trained. I can tell that some of them are still highly skilled and will give you problems if you're not stronger than this. Now I know you are half fallen angel, with whom my king is I am sure you can figure out how I came to get that information, I can also sense the power inside of you that you refuse to use, I don't know the full story behind why you don't want to use it but if you truly don't want to use it then all of your other abilities need to be able to make up for not using it or you may just find yourself using it anyway, said Naruto. I will never use that power Naruto-sama, said Akano with narrowed eyes. I don't give a fuck if you do or you don't, you just better be sure you can live with yourself and the results of your choice at the end of the rating game, said Naruto, I am going to take you back to the house so that you can eat and rest, if you wish to continue training with me then be back here in this field at 7 sharp otherwise I'll just assume you decided to quit and give your second day to Ko-chan, said Naruto as he picked her up and started back towards the house. Everyone stared in shock when Naruto walked in with a beaten Akano and laid her on the couch, what the hell did you do to Akeno, yelled Issei. I call it training done right, if you haven't pushed yourself beyond your limits at the end of each session then you didn't do it right, said Naruto as he started walking out of the house. Where are you going? asked Kiba, back out to train, just because I said I would help you train doesn't mean ill neglect my own training, said Naruto as he left. Naruto traveled a bit further from the house until he was in a clearing that would give him plenty of space to work with, he then quickly made a barrier around the area so that no one would bother him or know what he was doing, alright, let's get started, said Naruto with a smirk. Next day, nine days left, Naruto was walking towards the training area where he had told Akano to meet him and when he got there he was actually surprised to see her there doing stretches. Though with her body type the stretches looked rather erotic. He honestly expected her to quit but the fact she didn't honestly made him respect her a bit as it was clear to him that Rias didn't really push her peerage when it came to training, when Akano noticed him she stopped stretching and fired a lightning spell at him, like yesterday Naruto easily knocked it away with a backhand but noticed that he had to put a little effort into it, he then had to quickly dodge a gust of wind, a fireball, and a couple of earth spikes. Good, she didn't even let me say that training had started which means she's looking at me like an actual enemy. This is very good as it means in the rating game she won't allow her opponent time to prepare, Naruto thought to himself, he then started running towards her while dodging her attacks and threw a punch at her. Akino waited till the last moment to use night speed in order to dodge the punch. It was only for a quick moment but she saw the look of surprise on his face before he schooled his features, he threw a kick at her but she once again used night speed to dodge the attack then quickly fired a lightning bolt at him. Despite how close they were Naruto still managed to dodge her attack and then punch her in the chest causing her to roll across the ground until she came to a stop on her back, U Naruto sama, moaned Akano as she held her chest. Naruto walked over until he was standing over top of her, I have to say I am a little impressed as I had to slightly put in some slight effort that time, keep up this progress, said Naruto. Yes Naruto sama, said Akano before quickly launching at attack him which he quickly dodged. From then on training went much like it did yesterday with Akano trying to hit Naruto while Naruto beat the crap out of her. Akano was actually getting really frustrated that she hadn't been able to land a hit on Naruto at all. Sure she loved the pleasure that the pain of his hits brought her but she wanted to hit him as well. She wanted to hear him scream and see the face he would make while in pain. Satan's she was getting hot and bothered just thinking about it. What she didn't know was that Naruto made sure to keep his speed just above the speed of her spells so that it appeared that she hadn't made any progress, but the truth of the matter was that she had really improved in both speed and power when it came to her spells, by now most rooks, pawns, and bishops would either have no chance of dodging her attacks or would have a great deal of difficulty. 
Soon though Naruto found himself surrounded by Akino's magic circles, a moment later they all fired a lightning bolt at Naruto. There was an explosion that caused a large smoke cloud. Akino waited with bated breath as the smoke slowly cleared, standing there was Naruto with his arms crossed, he seemed fine except for the small scuff mark on his right shoulder, well Akino, it seems you finally managed to hit me and just in time too since our time is up, said Naruto. With that Akino fell to her knees with a small smile on her face, it may have only been a small hit but it was still a hit, once again Naruto had to carry Akino back to the house but at least this time she was awake, after sitting her down on the couch he was about to leave in order to train again until Kaneko stopped him by grabbing his hand. You need to rest, said Kaneko, you don't need to worry Ko-chan, I get plenty of rest, also tell Kiba that I'll meet him in front of the house at 7 and he better not be late, said Naruto though Kaneko still didn't let go, sighing at this Naruto lifted his arm, taking Kaneko with it, and place her on his back, fine you can come with me but you have to promise not to tell anyone about what you see me doing, said Naruto. Promise, said Kaneko as she snuggled into his back while Naruto carried her out of the house to his training area, Kiba, your turn tomorrow at 7, said Kaneko as they walked out the door, Kiba simply nodded. Next day, 8 days left, Naruto was now standing across from Kiba with Pantera in his hand while Kiba had a simple double-edged straight sword. The two just stood there staring at each other for a few moments before an unknown signal was given and they charged at each other. Sparks flew as their blades clashed with each other in rapid strikes. Kiba using two hands to hold his blade while Naruto only used one. Naruto looked at Kiba with bored eyes, it wasn't that he was underestimating Kiba or anything like that it was just that Naruto was trained to use a sword by his mother who did believe in holding back, then Pantera who also didn't believe in holding back, and then there were all of his fights with Tyr who of course didn't hold back on him, Kiba was clearly holding back as he didn't have the look in his eyes that showed he intended to kill his opponent. Kiba started to increase the speed of his attacks in order to gain an advantage over Naruto but nothing he did worked. He figured that Naruto was used to high speed fights, especially since now he recalled Naruto's fight with that Tyr woman, but still no rook should be fast enough to keep up with a knight, for a couple more minutes the two continued to clash with each other until Kiba jumped back in order to catch his breath, it was then that Kiba noticed that Naruto looked completely fine and still had that bored look on his face. I must say I am very impressed with your skill and speed, especially your speed since you were a rook and I didn't expect you to be able to keep up with me, said Kiba. Just because I am a rook doesn't mean I can't be as fast as a knight or even faster, besides you're not even going at full speed right now, now I suggest you pick up the pace, you should always fight every opponent with everything you've got, said Naruto. I don't believe you are giving your all either Naruto-san, said Kiba. That's because my all would kill you, said Naruto. You know for someone that doesn't like being looked down on you don't seem to mind looking down on others, said Kiba before Naruto suddenly disappeared and appeared beside Kiba with Pantera at his throat, Kiba was actually scared now as he hadn't noticed Naruto move at all. It's not that I am underestimating you, it's that I've taken your measure and have lowered myself to a level that you can handle. It is said that swordsmen are able to learn about each other when they clash and I have learned much about you, I can already tell that you have learned nothing of me because your mind is clouded, I don't know by what and I don't need to know, get your shit together and fight for your king like the knight you are supposed to be, said Nato as he moved his sword away from Kiba's neck. With that Naruto and Kiba began sparing once again but this time Kiba was using every ounce of speed he had, Naruto was keeping up but was having a little difficulty, he wasn't using Sonido because he was trying to increase his base speed, if his base speed increased then so too would his Sonido speed, hours passed before Kiba asked for them to stop for a moment. Naruto-san will we be doing anything other than sparing? asked Kiba. Not really, I am better at using my chakra and spiritual power than magic right now, you're not a hand to hand kind of fighter so I can't help you with that and we don't have time for me to teach you rune or seals, said Naruto. Well in that case I think we should cut my training with you short, I can easily sharpen my skills on my own, said Kiba. Naruto simply shrugged at this since if that was how Kiba wanted then it didn't really matter to him. Fine by me, I'll give your second day to Ko Chan, I am going to go train, tell Asia Chan to meet me here tomorrow at 7, said Naruto as he walked off. Later that night Naruto was panting in exhaustion, all around him were smoking craters from all of the new techniques he was trying out, he could practically feel his chakra network burning from the amount of stress he had put it through, but it was all worth it for the technique he had just created. Suddenly a magic circle appeared in the middle of his area with the Gremory crest in it, out of the circle came a beautiful woman with brown hair, purple eyes, and huge tits. She has to be related to Rias somehow with the crest and a body like that, Naruto thought to himself, hey just because he didn't have the greatest opinion of Rias doesn't mean he's blind to her beauty. 
When Venelana came out of the magic circle she noticed that the area she was in was completely destroyed and practically soaked in chakra, hum. Did Rias Rook finally start using her chakra? No that can't be it. This chakra is too powerful to belong to someone that hasn't used it since they were a toddler, Venelana thought to herself. Her eyes then fell onto Naruto and she clearly saw that he was exhausted but despite this fact he was tense and ready to fight. Oh hello there, I don't believe I've met you before, who are you? Asked Venelana. It's bad manners to ask someone their name without giving your own first, said Naruto. Oh right, how silly of me, I am Venelana Gremory, Rias' mother, are you perhaps a new member of Rias' peerage? Asked Venelana. No, I am Naruto Jaegerjakes, mutated rook of Sona Citri. I am just here to help Rias Peerage train for their upcoming raiding game, said Naruto. I see, well would you be so kind as to escort me to my daughter? Asked Venelana. Sure. I don't see why not, said Naruto, after dropping the barrier around them he lead Venelana back to the house. Though he was sure that she most likely already knew where it was, when they got there they found everyone in their night clothes watching some movie in the living room, Rias and Akeno were in very revealing see-through nighties, Asia was covered in a long with night dress, Kaneko was wearing an oversized shirt with a cat on the front, and Kiba and Issei were wearing t-shirts with pajama pants with Issei looking more at the girls than the movie. Naruto was disappointed that none of them looked to be tired at all meaning they didn't push themselves, Yo Rias, your mom is here, said Naruto. Mother. What are you doing here? asked a surprised Rias. That's your mom. yelled Issei before shoot back with a nosebleed when he focused on Venelana's breasts. Hello dear. I am here to help you with your training, said Venelana. Wait, you're really gonna help me? Asked Rias, of course, I've been trying to find a way to break this contract you have with the Phoenix clan for a while now, sadly nothing has worked but since you have a chance at freedom with this raiding game it is my duty as your mother to help you, said Venelana. Naruto walking back towards the door but was stopped by Kaneko, rest, said Kaneko. I don't need rest Ko-chan, said Naruto. Not wanting to argue with him about this Kaneko pulled out a weapon she never thought she would use, she allowed her ears and tail to show before looking up at him with her cat ears laying flat on her head while also making her eyes as big as possible. Please rest, said Kaneko in a soft childish voice. Naruto was not expecting this, his right eye twitched for a bit before he sighed and hung his head, fine, said Naruto, moments later Naruto found himself in only his boxers laying on a very comfortable king-size bed, with Kaneko curled up on his chest, in the end Naruto just sighed before going to sleep. Meanwhile in the living room everyone was still frozen in shock at seeing Kaneko doing something like that, it was just something they never thought they'd see the ever stoic Kaneko do. The next day, seven days left. Asia was currently wearing the Kuo Academy girls gym uniform which was a white t-shirt. A pair of dark blue bloomers, long socks, and sneakers. As of right now she is running from the dodgeballs that Naruto was throwing at her. This was her training in order to increase her speed and her ability to dodge. She was actually doing pretty well despite the fact that she was still getting hit quite a bit. What she didn't know was that Naruto was slowly increasing the speed in which he threw the balls so that she wouldn't get comfortable, after about 4 hours of that Naruto had Asia do some stretches before doing laps and many, many other exercises that focused on building speed and endurance, Naruto was actually very proud of Asia's work ethic. It was clear that Asia had never exercised like this in her entire life and yet she wasn't complaining and was giving her all. Off to the side Venelana watched all of this mostly because she didn't have much to do since she wouldn't be training Rias until a little later. She was also watching because Naruto had piqued her interest, now that he wasn't exhausted she could accurately measure his power and she was impressed with what she felt, he clearly had the power to be a mid-tier high class devil, she had also measured the power of Rias peerage members and was disappointed that Akano, Kiba, Kaneko, and even Rias herself hadn't gotten that much stronger, she decided to give Issei and Asia some credit since they were only recently added to Rias' peerage. Great job Asia Chan, take a 30 minute break and then well keep going, said Naruto as Asia collapsed into a sweaty heap, Naruto smirked at Asia's tired form as he patted her on the head and handed her a bottle of water. Mr. Jaegerjakes, may I have a word with you? asked Venelana as she walked up to him. Sure. And please just call me Naruto, let's walk and talk, said Naruto. Very well Naruto, I'd like to get your opinion on my daughter's chances of winning this raiding game, said Venelana. I don't know anything about Riser's skill level or the skill level of his peerage. But I can guess that because he's older that he has experience in raiding games. Also from his name and brief exchange with him I can guess he has power over fire and a strong healing factor, 
It also doesn't help that he has a full peerage while Rias only has one of each piece and while Rias' pieces are strong they don't train seriously and that can only hurt them. All in all I'd say that it'll be a close match but I don't expect them to win, said Naruto. He didn't like this as he knew what it would mean for Kaneko and Asia should Rias lose this rating game. I see, so even with your help they'll still lose, said Venelana. Maybe it all depends, I've already trained Akano some and she has improved but she'll be even stronger if she continues to train the way I trained her and if she stops holding back on using her fallen angel power. Kiba is really good but he needs to come at every opponent with everything he has and understand that sparring with someone stronger than you can greatly improve your skills. Asia isn't a fighter so she needs to increase her speed so she can dodge and flee from danger and knowing a few barrier spells wouldn't hurt. I am working on her speed and endurance today and tomorrow. I haven't trained Kaneko yet but I predict Shell show the most improvement of everyone, said Naruto. Interesting, and what of Rias? She told me that you're giving everyone but Issei two days of personal training, said Venelana. She didn't ask why Issei wasn't getting any training as she could practically feel the animosity between the two. Rias gave her days to Kaneko since she didn't think she would need my training. Kiba also gave up my training halfway through day one so now Kaneko has five days of training unless Asia gives up my training after today, said Naruto. Do you think young Asia will give up after today? asked Venelana. No, Asia may not be a fighter but she has the determination to help those she cares for, shall do all she can to help Rias, said Naruto. And what of you, how do you feel about my Rias? asked Venelana. Do you want my honest opinion? asked Naruto, of course, said Venelana. I honestly don't know how to truly feel about her, according to Kaneko and Asia Rias is a good person and is supposed to be sweet and caring, but I have not met that Rias yet. I've been dealing with a manipulative bitch that just seems to love rubbing me the wrong way, said Naruto. Venelana sighed at this as she figured that this whole situation with Riser was getting to her daughter and causing her to act differently than she usually would, I'll have to talk to Rias about this, I can already see that Naruto will be a great ally to have later, Venelana thought to herself, I am sorry for any trouble my daughter has caused you, said Venelana. You don't need to apologize for Rias, her actions are her own and not yours, said Naruto. Venelana nodded to this before they both went their separate ways as Asia's break was over and it was time for Venelana to train Rias. The next day, six days left, Naruto was not surprised at all that despite how hard he was on her yesterday Asia was still willing to train with him. Right now he had her running laps while trying to dodge the dodgeballs he was throwing. Venelana was watching once again and she easily noticed that Asia was doing much better than yesterday. She knew this was because Asia's body was that of a devil now and a devil's body naturally adapted to physical exercise, even now Venelana could see that Asia was running a bit faster, her movements were a bit smoother, and her reactions were a bit faster, the young girl was still getting hit but she was doing better than yesterday. While watching Naruto and Asia Venelana thought about her talk with Rias last night and she couldn't believe what Rias had said to the boy. Then she had the nerve to use his friendship with her rook to try and get information out of him and then further manipulated him into helping her, now while devils are manipulative creatures, she knew that her daughter didn't like acting like that, at least to the extent that she's been acting lately, she now understood just how bad the situation between Rias and Naruto was simply because she can tell just how prideful of a person that didn't like being manipulated, she was honestly surprised that Naruto hasn't attacked Rias yet. Other than that though Venelana found herself interested in Naruto, she could easily tell that he was a warrior type of person so the best way to get to know him quickly was to fight him, with that in mind she walked over to Naruto with her goal clear in her mind, Naruto, I have a small request to make of you, said Venelana. What can I help you with Venelana? asked Naruto, Venelana raised an eyebrow and Naruto's casual use of her first name but already figured that he wasn't a person that cared too much about titles, normally she would be bothered by this but for some reason him using her first name didn't bother her, I'd like to have a spar with you when you're finished training young Asia, said Venelana. Naruto looked at Venelana with a savage smirk on his face, he could feel a small portion of her power and knew she was far stronger than he was but that only excited him, Naruto believed that fighting her would greatly increase his strength and push him closer to getting his balance breaker, I'd love to spar with you Venelana, said Naruto, thanks for watching.